So, uh, microphones. Um, They're here. That's it. Do you want us to approach the. Uh, no, no, you can just do your thing. You can just stand yeah. bent over the entire okay. time, just okay. speaking into it. <laughs> <laughs> or hold it up. You <laughs> could. Okay. Okay. Jose would be here. I owe him a check, but he's not here. All right, at 6.30, I'm going to open the November 30th, 2017 meeting of the Board of Selectmen. Our first order of business tonight is to have a tax rate classification hearing that is conducted with our Board of Assessors and our Principal Assessor. So I will turn it over to you. All right. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> the tax classification hearing for... The listening audience is uh, that, uh, that statutory event that takes place uh, once a year to uh, address one simple question. Does the town of Lakeville adopt a single tax rate or alternatively uh, dual tax rates, uh, essentially a higher tax rate on commercial and industrial properties that would translate into a lower <coughs> tax rate for residential properties? So that's the point of the hearing tonight. Um, I will uh, follow the uh, document that I've prepared for you just by way of update. Um, normally, when we come into this hearing, we will have had our new growth certified. Uh, all the paperwork is in uh, the Fall River office awaiting uh, certification. We'll probably have that. Uh, in hand tomorrow, uh, unfortunately, uh, we're a day off. So um, uh, this, uh, this session will need to be reconvened next week to finish the uh, vote, uh, or take the vote on your classification <coughs> uh, Right, but you don't anticipate the numbers changing. No. Right, okay. I think um, what you see in this document represents what will end up uh, being approved in the way of a, a proposed tax rate. Um, assuming you adopt a single tax rate uh, to, um, at the end of this process. Uh, this is an important year for Lakeville. Uh, this is our uh, triennial uh, certification year. A uh, Department of Revenue certification represents, in effect, an audit of our assessments, assessment practices, uh, everything that goes into uh, the formulation of values. Um, also looks at the quality of uh, the data that uh, we uh, gather and maintain throughout the year. Uh, and uh, we have passed uh, muster with the Department of Revenue. Uh, we have, uh, in effect, uh, been certified. Our values have been certified. Uh, it's important to, to know, looking at the numbers, that uh, average assessments, both in the residential and commercial class, are going up uh, somewhere between 3 and 5 percent. Uh, that reflecting uh, an appreciating market and uh, rising property values. Uh, there are uh, caveats, obviously, if you've added an addition, uh, or if you're in some uh, subclass of property that we've determined is relatively undervalued, you might see a slightly higher increase than the norm. But, uh, we talk in terms of averages. Averages represent highs and lows and everything in between. People need to recognize that, uh, uh, that fact. Uh, so uh, you'll see on the second page here, uh, the development of our property tax levy. Uh, we had uh, and have um, we have about three hundred and eighteen thousand dollars in new property tax revenue uh, coming to the uh, uh, to the town on new construction. Uh, that new construction, of course, includes new homes, new condominiums. Uh, new uh, convenience stores uh, and uh, what people um, see when they drive around town in the way of new construction. Um, we are um, <coughs> well, permitted to raise, under Proposition 2 and a half, $22,463,000. Uh, we'll be raising uh, close to that amount. 
um, essentially leaving excess levy capacity of around $7,000. That $7,000 is there only by virtue of the fact that if we raise the tax rate, the proposed tax rate uh, uh, by one penny, uh, we would exceed the, uh, um, the maximum allowable levy. Um, you'll see, um, you'll see here uh, at the bottom of uh, this page um, a breakdown of the property uh, classes, uh, major <coughs> classes, and in Lakeville, residential properties represent about uh, eighty-six point four percent of the taxable base, um, about the corresponding roughly thirteen and a half percent of our tax bases in commercial properties. That tells us that if we were to um, adopt a split rate, we would have to raise um, commercial and industrial tax rates significantly to yield a very modest reduction in residential values, or uh, taxes. For that reason, the Board of Assessors uh, has uh, uh, voted at their last meeting to recommend uh, that the selectmen adopt, as they have in the past, a single tax rate to be applied uh, across all classes of property. <coughs> if you uh, choose to adopt a uniform or single tax rate, uh, I am projecting that tax rate to come in at $13.64 per thousand. Uh, that's uh, a little bit lower than last year's $13.86. Of course, we need to remember valuations are going up, so lower tax rate against higher valuations. And the average residential property owner will see uh, an increase in their uh, fiscal year 2018 taxes. I am estimating that increase to be about $127 on average, uh, reflecting about a 2.8% increase. Um, that pretty much summarizes uh, uh, this document and my comments. Um, I do offer on the last page a, uh, a proposed motion. Uh, that motion uh, should be made at the uh, meeting on the, uh, the, the continued hearing on the 6th. So with that, I'll entertain any questions you have. Do you have any questions, John? Thank you. Uh, for all, I really appreciate this document. I know the first time you did this, I was really impressed with how you lay out all the information. It's a very, um, very well done document in terms of understanding the process and understanding the numbers. So I appreciate that thoroughness again this year. Um, and I, I don't have any questions, but right. I appreciate your Thank you. Your appreciate it. I do have one small question. So last year, I think it was at the annual town meeting, was that when we voted to exclude the property tax, the personal property tax, on the very small amounts? Yes. And so I know that that wasn't a very large amount, but that would be reflected through this calculation where the, the shift kind of hits the residential. I can't give you... Uh, it's probably like one, 10 bucks. <laughs> it wasn't much. Uh, like when, it was less than that. It was less than that. It was 1.2%. One, 1. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure that, that also oh, is in right. there. Right, right, okay. right, right. So that, the, yeah, so the valuation of the personal property doesn't include that then this year. Like, it, it's just excluded from the total. Any, any action the, the, the assessors take to reduce the taxable valuation ends up getting translated into a slight increase in the uh, tax rate. Yes. Okay. That increase might be less than a penny right. uh, based on that. Uh, okay. but your, your question is, is I, I think you're asking, when well, you look at personal property, you look at that sharp evaluation, this number doesn't include right. what used to be. Um, yeah. the, right. Yeah, it's right. net of those accounts. It's that those that accounts don't exist. They, 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 they don't exist. Okay. okay. Right. I don't have any questions on your, on your proposal. I think it's, as, as Aaron indicated it's it's well done uh, there's been many articles written I'll just take a minute many articles written on various tax rates by town you can do them by Bristol County Plymouth County but there was one done by the Brockton Enterprise not that that's a Bible but there were 25 towns that they service and virtually we had the lowest tax rate uh, of those 25 towns 
and as far as the average tax bill, we were uh, fourth from the, the lowest average tax bill also. And, and the other two of the three that were below us were within $50 of the, of the average tax bill, which I think our <coughs> average tax bill is $4,500, something like that. So it still maintains a low tax, uh, which is a good thing. I wish we had more business area to attract more businesses because we have a good tax rate. Okay. So I guess just to that point, so we've got our two and a half percent this year was 523,635. So that's that's our levy limit increase under Prop two and a half that we were able to bring in for revenue on top of what we will get tomorrow as our certified new growth of 318,063. So it's a total of guaranteed revenue that the town brought in last year of 941,698. If we look at that and we add approximately two and a half percent to those two numbers, so we can see what our additional revenue would be next year, we're roughly at about 965,000. Um, sorry, our guarantee is gonna be 21,000 plus the 523. So we'll be somewhere around 545,000-ish, I think on the two and a half levy limit increase as we go into the budget season. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm just trying to get to is that we'll, when we do our levy, what's that? No, no, it's, uh, is it? It's 841, oh, it's 891. 891. Right. Wow. Clearly I didn't get to dinner. I was going to wait. <laughs> <laughs> so eight and a quarter. 841, eight, 698. Eight. But the 21 is where it is anyway. Right. So I did the, yep. the math right yep. on the other side. I did that. Right. So roughly what we'll end up bringing in with the two and a half percent levy limit going to that is revenue of about five hundred and forty five thousand dollars as we move into the budget season roughly and then whatever the new Plus growth is going to be Plus next year so it's just one of those things i just want to you know keep in mind that that's all we have for guaranteed funds um coming in through the taxing right system. And, and the new growth was was what i call fairly substantial at 318 because we had such things as more duplexes at the, the Baron Estates, one very significant executive home, uh, the Seasons gas station. Uh, so there was some significant growth. This year seems a little bit of a lull, and next year may, may have more houses being built. But uh, the 318 is probably, you never kind of project, but probably the peak of the, of the growth at this point in time. So hard to forecast yep. what the, the building season will bring next spring. Um, I always caution uh, coming, building a budget around conservative numbers and then allowing for some flex if we, if we get a right, right, project. Right. I think that's what Mitzi was having. <coughs> it's just trying to see what we know we're going to be bringing in for revenue as we move into the budget season, which yep. is the 545 plus mm -hmm. whatever the new growth comes in at, which Maybe it's 255 for ease of math. Yep. <laughs> Which then would be $800,000. Yep. Don't count on the three. Yeah, exactly. Sir, do you have a question? Yeah, I had a question. Uh, 225 Bedford Street. Identify uh, Vicky. Excellent. Thank okay. you. I had a question um, on Staple Shore. Um, I, I kind of looked at you devaluated those houses um, from business to residential. Now, do they get a break, or were they paying the same rate? No, the, the tax rate is consistent among all the zoning classifications. So if you're in a residential or a commercial, it's the same one tax rate. One tax rate. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else have any questions relative to uh, agenda item number one? I thank you for both coming in. Um, we'll conclude this at our next meeting when we have the final numbers. And, uh, okay. <coughs> Like to move that? I would. Uh, I move that we vote to continue the tax rate classification hearing to our meeting next week on Wednesday. I'll second that. I don't know what the date is. December 6th. December 6th. Okay. It's not working. It's not yet. I know. I need to keep prior to it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. <coughs> okay. Uh, uh,
agenda item number two is to meet with Derek Maxey to discuss his plans for the former Lakeville Hospital property. I assume that's why most of you are here. Uh, Derek is here. Derek, do you want to wait until 7 or? I'm ready whenever you are. Okay. <coughs> why is this? Oh, I see. Okay. So, Derek, Derek, we posted this for 7, so we're going to wait until then to start, just in case other people want to show up. Sure. Um, but we'll just we're going to just continue with other agenda items to get through the uh, get through our agenda. Um, maybe we could skip down to eight. Wait, let's do uh, yeah, let's do eight. So this is a request from the town clerk to the board of selectmen to approve the warrant for the town election. This is our annual town election on April second, twenty eighteen. Our Lakeville Town election will be held on Monday, April 2nd, 2018, from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the following location. Precincts 1, 2, and 3 at Ted Williams Camp, Loon Pond Lodge, 28 Precinct Street, Lakeville, Massachusetts. Registered voters of the town will elect the following positions into office. One year term, one moderator. Five year term, one planning board member. Three year term, one selectman, one board of assessors member, one board of health member, one cemetery commissioner, two finance committee members, one park commissioner, and one library trustee. <clears throat> oh, I see, yep. The board also moves to include on the annual town election ballot the office of Freetown Lakeville Regional School District Committee member as follows, Lakeville, two three year term, one one-year unexpired term, Freetown, one three-year term. Do you have any questions relative to this? No. <clears throat> okay, I'll entertain a motion to accept the uh, warrant as drafted. So moved. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, motion carries, it's unanimous. Agenda item number nine. A request for the renewal of a storage trailer permit at 19 Stetson Street, Philip Sherman. Philip Sherman has requested the renewal of his temporary storage trailer at 19 Stetson Street. If approved, this permit would expire on December 3, 2018. We received a copy of Mr. Sherman's application. <coughs> um, do we normally get any other information on no. these? No. This is a storage. <coughs> storage. Oh, All right, that's right. Um, do you have anybody have any questions? No. Nope. He's done it every year. What are the few? Temporary, one of the few, one of the very few. Okay, um, well, I move that we grant the permit as requested. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Motion carries, it's unanimous. All right, agenda item number 10. Do we want to extend closing times for package stores? <coughs> liquor licenses on Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. The ABCC allows local licensing authority to extend Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve package door closing hours until 11.30. In the past, we've kept it at 11. What do we want to do this year? Keep it at 11? Same. We haven't received any requests no, okay. to have it be longer, right? No. Yeah, I'm good with that. Everyone seems to yeah. be going at 9 o'clock. Right. Like the. All right. So, do we take no action on this if we're not extending it? Mr. Chair, um, if you could have a vote, because I need to notify you the liquor licensees. Right, I, okay. Yes. Yeah, I remember that now. 
Um, I move that we do not extend the time from 11 to 1130. I'll second that. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries, it's unanimous. <clears throat> Agenda item number 12. Restaurants with liquor licenses on New Year's Eve. Unlike the package stores, we have traditionally extended the hours until 11.30 a.m. with all patrons out at 2 a.m. As a local licensing authority, we're allowed to extend the last call hours on New Year's Eve. We've done it in the past, if we want to do it again. Yes. Uh, okay, I agree. Everyone's gone by 11, but we'll stand, still extend it. <laughs> well, no, this is New Year's Eve. Right? I know, Everybody's I know. Well, 11, the, well, maybe 11.15, New Year's Eve. <laughs> All right. Um, do you have any questions? Here? All right. I think we'll get, we extend the closing times um, as requested on New Year's Eve. I'll second that. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries. It's unanimous. Let's see that as built plan for Cedar Pond Preserve. <coughs> Agenda item number five is to vote and sign the as built plans for Cedar Pond Preserve. So this was a town. Uh, or I should say a number of town roads that were accepted at our town meeting and we need to sign them uh, so that they can be recorded. So we need to vote first and then sign them. I just hit the pen. Do you have any questions no. on this one? No. Do you have any questions? I don't. I'll entertain a motion to accept the plans as drafted and sign them. So moved. Signing them. So moved. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah, you got you gotta sign more than that one. Yeah, I agree. No, no, I'll, I'll go back in seconds. I just, I don't know, I can sign up. Or I should be more efficient.
Yeah, there's no signature. Yeah, she's gonna check. Yeah, you can. Take one within five minutes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I... Yes. Yeah, we can do that one. Oh. All right. Agenda item number four is to review and vote on the extension of the purchase and sales agreement for 239 Main Street Assessor's Office. We have a, a copy of an extension for review. The original was in the signed folder. So the town uh, is selling the assessor's building, and we have a contract with a purchaser. The purchaser has requested an extension for the time of performance from December 6th to December 29th. Do you have any questions relative to that? Do you have any questions? Yeah. Nope. Um, I'll entertain a motion to approve the extension of time of performance from December 6th to December 29, 2017. So moved. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> motion carries. It's unanimous. Mr. Chair, do you want to do the appointments to the superintendent of the street committee? That's quick. Um, oh, yeah, where is that one? That's oh, under old business. Oh, I see. Yep, okay. Yeah, that was that. You can do that. Appoint the following people to the Superintendent of Street Search Committee Nathan Darling, Frank Avalera, Daniel Hopkins, Ryan Trahan, Roger Hamilton, Aaron Burke, uh, with an expiration date of when do they normally expire? July 31st, 2018. July 31, 2018. That's my motion. I'll second that. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries, it's unanimous. We're close. Sponsor for Winter Chef, Winter Fest. Pro group contract. 
chickens and coming. <laughs> So, folks, we're going to set up a microphone just so that we can have everybody project better so that everybody in the back can hear. Um, that might just take a few minutes. It's 7 o'clock, so um, agenda item number two is to meet with Derek Maxey to discuss his plans for the former Lakeville Hospital property. Um, we'll just take a few minutes to get that set up, and then, Derek, you can, uh, we'll, we'll uh, signal for you to come on down. How you doing? I have to keep it. I, I was going to say, I think we need the eldest guy that comes in here. Is it, hello, is it working back there now? No, no. Oh, Jesus. The I can talk well, I can yell if that'll work. Um, <laughs> so we, uh, we got a call from Derek Maxey, who had, he, he has set up uh, an LLC that purchased the, the property at the Lakeville Hospital site. He wanted to come in and have a conversation with the Board of Selectmen about what his plans may be for that. Um, I invited him to, well, I accepted that, of course, and, and added to the agenda. And we've since let folks know that for the sake of, uh, you know, hopefully getting some uh, concerns or questions answered tonight to a certain degree. What this isn't is um, kind of an open forum, if you will. So what I really want to see happen is Derek do his presentation to us. We kind of field some questions to him. We'll open it up to all of you for the sake of questions relative to what he's presenting. Um, but I want to try to keep it within the scope of that because I think that that's um, 
kind of what he's presenting to us tonight. So when we do have the question um, <laughs> section, I'd, I'd like you to identify yourself and um, direct all questions through the chair, which is me. And we'll, um, we'll do our best to, uh, to hopefully get some direction on, on what's going on. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I brought some what they call, well, first of all, my name is Eric Nancy. Uh, I live in Lakeville, like, like all of us here. Uh, and why I bought the property, I'm still not sure. But I get tired of driving by it and seeing nothing was happening to it. Uh, so I inquired about it, and next thing you know, we, were, we made, came up with an agreement that uh, we purchased the property, my wife and I, Madeline. And, you know, hopefully tonight and from now on, we can come up with some consensus of what the town might want there. But what I did bring for the board of selection, I have a few, I wasn't expecting this many. Uh, well, probably was expecting, I'm not sure. But Lakeville in 2010 did a Lakeville Hospital Growth District Development Plan. So I'm going to pass some to the board members and staff up here. And Madeline has a few that she can, maybe you guys can just share a few of them down there. Thanks. And I'm, if, if, sorry, Mr. Chairman, I'll stand more over here so that. Sure, yeah. Well, maybe the camera's not right here. But. Right. So if I'm not speaking loud enough, just raise your hand back there, and, and I'll try to speak a little louder. Uh, I am a little uncomfortable. Uh, I was thinking of postponing this meeting, but I guess I probably would have got tired and feathered today if I did do that. But thank you all for coming. I really do appreciate you all coming. Uh, so again, uh, I wanted to thank the Board of Selectmen and the residents, uh, as I noticed some town officials and uh, committee members and stuff here, for allowing me to come here tonight to speak. Uh, and I wanted to mention that my wife and I are both business owners in Lakeville. Uh, kids went to school in Lakeville, uh, now in college. Uh, we, 2011, my wife and I bought the Lakeville Country Club, which was, uh, was kind of getting to be defaulted as a business. Uh, I'm not a golfer, but I saw potential there. Uh, today, we have over 30 employees that work for us there. And you know we've been fairly successful, and we enjoy what we're doing there. Uh, so I wanted to kind of get that out there. Uh, and the main thing here is we, we really want, and we want to do what we all think fits in this area. It's a very delicate area. I know it's uh, it's first thing you see when you come into Lakeville. We don't want it to be an eyesore for everybody coming in. Uh, we don't really have a def any real definitive plan, and that's kind of one of the reasons I wanted to come here tonight, to, to kind of see what other folks think might fit in that area. The um, so I'm really, you know, we're here to try to get some ideas. My wife's going to take notes on, it, you know, when people, you know, give us some ideas what you think should happen there. The, uh, excuse me, we, the only thing we have planned today right now is to do uh, some uh, five or six houses on Route 79. Uh, there's a lot of expenses to cleaning up this property, as everyone's aware. So I think today it's uh, the last estimate is about a $6.9 million cleanup for the buildings that are there and the environmental all the environmental concerns are there. Uh, and I do want to uh, formally thank Stop and Shop for actually letting this happen. Uh, they could have continued trying to sell it to whoever. I sat down with them and I told them that you know, we wanted to try to do something that the town and all of us could be proud of. So coming up with that, and there's a lot of talk about what I paid for. Yes, I didn't pay a lot as far as the purchase price goes, but there are other issues that we did have to pay for as we're doing this. Uh, and again, there's still the $6.9 million cleanup that we're very aware of how that has to be done. Uh, I personally used to work for a demo company, so I understand the demolition process. I worked with, uh, I'm working with a gentleman, I believe his name is Mr. Higgins, I'm trying to remember right now, out of DEP, the DEP office for the environmental side of it. Uh, I have an LSP that we brought on board already, who's uh, currently we've done close to 60 or 70 test holes in different areas to see what's out there to confirm what the reports are saying. Uh, and at a later date, that gentleman can, you know, I'll bring him in, he can kind of explain the process of what he goes through. Uh, so the, uh, so, uh, and I do really want to stress the stop and shop thing. You know, they, they bought the property, as everybody knows, back in the early 2000s. They tried a lot of things. The economy fell apart on them in 2008, as we all know. So that kind of fell flat on them. The Cisco thing that didn't that didn't go through. Uh, the, the town decided what they wanted, you know. So now we're at this point here, 
and I think the biggest thing is, uh, you know, I look at the property and I say, you know, what do I see there? And, you know, I'm looking at it with blindness, you know, because it's just me looking at it. But to hear what other people think we should do with it, I, I have been following social media, seeing what the ideas are coming out. There's been some interesting ones. Uh, but I think the biggest thing is uh, we've got to get it cleaned up. We've got to get this property so that, you know, it's something we can be proud of. One of the thoughts I had is maybe a campus-style retail slash residential component so that it's almost like uh, this, not to rent them all so much, but something that brings businesses into the area instead of just running on the main road itself. So it would have its own pocket inside. That's one of the things I kind of thought about. I, I like mom and pop type businesses. I'm not big on change. I, I kind of would rather see local people come in and try to do start up there, things like that. Uh, and I think that, and obviously I have to meet with every board, constellation, plan about all this, to start pushing these ideas out there. Uh, and I would like to uh, mention to the selectmen that at some point, I would like to try to get a small committee going, you know, some at-large members, some uh, public officials, uh, different people tell me to get together and meet on a monthly basis and try to bring things back to the people so, you know, forums like this don't always have to happen. Uh, but again, I'm here to hear what the concerns are and answer whatever questions I can at this point. But as far as the other buildings, I don't know right now. I have, other than the White House, we're cleaning up the White House. It's been an eyesore for quite a while, and I think that you know, we're cleaning up all the roads. You're going to see some of the street lights come on for, for better security out there. Uh, we have a few of them on now, but uh, I'm very concerned about the neighboring, you know, the West Pond Road residents out there, uh, the people coming from CVS at 79. So I thought the residential component would be nice at first to try to get that going to get the property occupied. Uh, so I'll give it back to the chair. Great. So, thank you. Thank you. Um, do you do you want to start? Do you have questions or? Well, I can start. We can go down this way or do it any way you want. I, I have a few questions. Okay. Yeah, uh, John Podley, one of the selectmen, and basically it's not so many questions for Derek, but I've asked him to go back uh, back in, I believe, April of 2016. Uh, a a great presentation was put forward at the Lakeville Library by, I think it was Serpent? Yes. And yeah. uh, they gave us a lot of uh, proposals or suggestions as to what could be done with that site. Uh, some of it was interesting, some of it isn't doable, but they gave a lot of suggestions. So uh, I'm sure that that meeting would still be on uh, Lake Cam, so I would certainly imply that people should watch that. I certainly imply that yeah. Madeline and Derek should watch that. And there were some questions broached. A lot of the same neighbors that are here tonight were there, and uh, it's it's a big project. So I caution everyone to uh, put in their ideas. But I'd like to start with. Uh, certainly something that was on Lake Cam, and it was uh, well done. It took a, I think we met there for a couple of hours, and uh, I'd ask people to view that so you get a flavor of what was suggested by the, the professionals, uh, I call them professionals, uh, as to what could go in that site. So I don't have so many questions of uh, Derek. I like his, uh, his idea of getting together with people I, I do want to caution him that that committees made up of private citizens with with a private ownership. Uh, my my uh, past history is that doesn't necessarily work uh, because you'll you'll outline 20 different things. The next meeting it's 20 different things. The next meeting is 20 different things. After that, I'd like them to keep this forum, whether it's here or whether it's at the high school, wherever we can do it, but as they move along to keep us all informed, as I think that they're graciously doing, they don't have to do this. Uh, they don't have to have a public hearing. It's private property. So, but, so I thank them for that. So I'd just like to start at the 2016 suggestions. Uh, and 
that's really what I got to say. Give it a word. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Can I just, on that note, is that available on the town website? It, it, you could, should be able to get a CD right well, from, just yes, 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 it should be. If it, if it isn't, Lake Cam's going to look it up uh, and make sure it's on there. Yeah. It was taped by them. Uh, should be most of our stuff that goes on uh, Vimeo, so you can look up uh, on Google, look up yeah. you know, on Lake Cam, yeah. Lake Cam on Vimeo. Very, very specifically, look it up, make sure it's there. Yeah. Yeah. Before they start digging, and it's not there. Right. Yeah. Um, oh, okay, so Derek, I know that you you had submitted some some form A's to um, the planning board relative to residential on the 79 side of the parcel. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, that's probably. Can everybody kind of see that? So uh, this is. I'm going to turn a little bit so the board can see it. So the property, you have the 105 side here. Then you have the 79 comes in. This is the relocated 79. CVS, everybody knows, is there. And then, of course, we got Baldi's here and Walgreens. And then the, the I guess it would be the southerly side of the property, is basically a straight line kind of right in this area here. So there was uh, what we're proposing, uh, some form age right along this area here. So it'll fit with that neighborhood. Uh, there are residential houses on the other side. You have Rust Pond on the left. So that's where we're at now. And I'm looking at this as a long-term commitment. So as we sell something and generate some revenue, it goes back into uh, taking, for example, the superintendent's office down, <coughs> excuse me, doctor's office that's down there. That's an environmental thing that needs to be cleaned up. So this is my commitment with Stop and Shop is as I do things, the money's going back into the project. And then once we do some more, then we're going to probably look at doing something with the old Children's Hospital, because that's the next thing. And we're taking the kind of taking bites out of the apple little by little and trying to get the place cleaned up. But that would be all up at the all up in this area here with the house of government. <coughs> okay, Mitzi, do you have uh, questions? So, you know, I think that we're all well aware of what's going on, or who knows what's going on really with South Coast Rail. Um, you know, and that's a big issue that we have also as another topic on the agenda for tonight to talk about the solar canopies that they're proposing um, on the actual parking lot when they decide, as they told us at the meeting in Middleborough just uh, last week or the week before, that they were planning on closing the Lakeville station, which was the first that we had heard of it. Um, but so the study that was done in 2016 in April, it's, it's somewhat ironic because the project funding was from funds provided by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Mass DOT South Coast Rail Project. So um, just to kind of add more irony to the fire. But I think, you know, what we're looking at is a, an area in Lakeville that you is... Hear back here. <clears throat> I, I, I honestly don't know that I can speak any louder <laughs> due to... <clears throat> Someone can just speak for me. Percussive you know what I'm saying. <laughs> No, it doesn't work. Yeah. I, I wish I could speak louder right now, but my voice isn't actually allowing me to. Hey, if you stand up. Yeah. Jeez. I'll try. <laughs> I, I just want to say that, um, you know, what we're looking at is we have a lot of potential development that is happening, a lot of activity that is going on in this area, of which we don't really have any clear answers to any of this. So I think it's just important to kind of keep an open mind. And I know, you know, I applaud you for coming in front and trying to get and solicit some feedback because you certainly don't have to. So I, you know, I appreciate knowing that just as a citizen of Lakeville more than anything else. So um, that's really kind of all I have to say. This isn't going to work. It's not going to work. Or I can't <coughs> figure out by looking at it. I think I'm on screen now. I don't even know if I can get it. <laughs> Okay, so does anybody have questions? Raise your hand, identify yourself. Oh, way in the back, Dick. I can uh, make lots of noise. <laughs> come, come a little closer and identify yourself, please. First of all, Derek, um, I've got to applaud your... Or don't. ...ingenuity <laughs> in getting project off dead center and I'd like to thank you for doing that publicly. I'd also
also like to offer whatever assistance I can. Um, I've been appointed um, the mayor of Rush Pond Road. And other than Route 79, uh, we cover a portion that's uh, been long-standing residential, as has Route 79 and 105. And I just want you to know that the existing zoning that was worked out with Stop and Shops uh, Developer National uh, did go through the planning board, and there were a lot of hearings. Uh, and we basically came up with, quote, a mixed-use uh, project. And uh, when SERP had made their presentation, uh, I believe the chairman of the planning board uh, commented on the fact that a lot of activities had taken place to reflect the zoning that was adopted at town meeting for a mixed use. And, and we all know what that proposal was. So as people look at the SERPID tape, I'd like them to also look at the existing zoning um, because it is the last time there was a public vote that adopted zoning required for the Stop and Shops developer to proceed. I've heard certain things that you've talked about uh, on media with regard to demo and possible reuse of the, the buildings, and certainly that's cost avoidance. And what I heard discussed was medical. And if we were to look at our town globally, um, we have senior housing requirements that are being met by certain senior housing developments. <coughs> Certainly, the residential zoning of that property was reflected as senior housing. And while we may not adopt exclusive senior housing, I think it's important that there should be some component of senior housing, particularly if we go uh, any higher density than what's in the current bylaws uh, of the property. Um, with regard to the uh, environmental issues, the LSP, which is, for the people who don't know, a licensed site professional, he's basically going to counsel you as to what the law requires uh, as you go forward. And I think you should be applauded for that, too, because there have been environmental concerns and the fact that you're doing the test board is a test to the fact that you're not just taking what's gone before, you are now the owner, and therefore you are in the chain of liability, and you're taking what I would consider is protective for you and the town, and you should be applauded for that. <coughs> One other component that I'd like you to consider is there's been a lot of activity with regard to the Open Space Committee. And the Open Space Committee uh, is good for uh, the town, because it provides open space. Uh, it's good for the mixed use development because as we do higher densities, there should be offsets. And certainly there is a significant wetland area. Uh, so in that regard, as you meet with the conservation committee, um, whether we have the ad hoc committees or it's strictly through town committees or through the selectmen committees, I'm, I'm just saying that that wetland component should have a high input from CONCOM and the Open Space Committee because you can't build on it anyway and it could be a tremendous attribute uh, to the town as we, as, as we move forward. And once again, thank you. Thank you for having this meeting and uh, I'm real pleased you took the initiative. Well, thank you. Can I, Mr. Chairman, can I say? Absolutely. Yeah, sure. And, I, and I, I want to add to that, Mr. Scott. Uh, one of the things that I'm using is my, my Bible, let's say, is the mixed use zone and that was put for. Because uh, it doesn't make sense for me to try to reinvent the wheel. I mean, it's been decided what the town wants, just as, just as the other documents out of here. And it's just, it's a guideline for me to go forward, my wife and I to go forward with this. Uh, and it all makes sense. You know, it, it was thought out. It's, it doesn't make any sense for me to try to reinvent the wheel. Uh, and I know one of the components was housing 55 and older. <clears throat> Uh, and just so folks know, that's not a part of you. It's anyone 55 and older can move in a house. Uh, and I had thought in one instance, one of the, you know, brain parts that I've had, 
is there's a very tall building off to the back here. They used to be the nurses' quarters, and I thought that might be a nice place for 55 and older. One, two bedroom units. Uh, it's a seven story building. Again, it would have to get all approved. But that was kind of the thought. I, I thought it would fit the need for a lot of us older folks in Lakeville that want to go to Florida and come back and don't want to own two houses. So I, that's one of the first things I think I'm going to start really seriously looking at uh, and see if something like that works for that area. Thank you. Um, sir? Uh, Rick Velez, A. Kingman. Uh, just curious on a project like this. Anytime residential, regardless of age or situation, it puts burdens on the town as far as police, EMS, you know, uh, water. What's being done? What are, would be your goals as far as trying to offset the cost to the town as a result of the res residential component? Well, I think because I'm going to be doing mixed use, which is going to be a lot of commercial, light industrial, uh, there's going to be a lot of tax revenue for the town coming from that, just instead of the tax revenue that it generates now, which is, well, that size property isn't really that much. But the mix is what we're trying to do. The 55 and older. In my opinion, would be geared more towards, uh, you know, singles, couples, something like that. Uh, and kind of looking like a condo type, like you go to Florida to get the condos with the pool, tennis, that kind of environment where I'm not looking for that particular building to be a place for kids, no offense. But there are other, you know, components like the housing on 79 that could do that. So I'm not looking at it being a real big uh, place bringing a lot of, a lot of school children that are going to go to school, because I know that's the burden. And as far as the police and fire, I mean, we have our own security and stuff. Uh, that is one thing I did want to mention, mention on the fire side. Uh, Middleborough graciously has allowed us to leave the hydrants on <clears throat> so that we, we actually, I had the chief, both chiefs involved. We tested the hydrants, make sure they work, so that they know that in case there is a problem from this point on, that they have fire protection. So, uh, and that was just on the, there's no agreement, just a temporary basis until we come up with some plan down the road as far as water and stuff. Yeah, I just have uh, another point to make. We're, we're here on Derek's and, and Madeline's proposal, but there is other development that will possibly go on in the Lakeville Corporate Park. So I ask you all to view those hearings on Lake Cam also so you understand perhaps what other builders are doing what the selectmen are trying to do regarding zoning, that they may have different proposals coming up at the June town meeting. So there's a lot of activity. It's certainly not on the agenda to talk about the other items, but I certainly don't just be involved in Derek's project because there's other substantial projects going on in that same area. So uh, you can certainly look at the agendas and you could look at Lake Cam. So I wanted to mention that. Uh, because there's other proposals of, of uh, not mixed businesses, but mixed homes, whether they're single family, duplexes, senior homes, that type of thing. So there's a lot of activity going on beyond uh, Derek and Madeline's proposal or suggestions. Thank you. Thanks. Nelson? Uh, Nelson Pratt, yeah. Derek, I applaud you for getting this group together tonight. Thank you for, for what you tried to initiate it. I feel a little awkward uh, in asking this question because it's a private investment. And we're not part of that investment. Well, I'll let Madeline answer. So feel free to tell me. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, but you mentioned in your, in your statement that you were going to piecemeal this development over some period of time. I get that. Um, with that in mind, Developing five or six house lots on Route 79 will get a very limited amount of money in relation to what she said was a $6.9 million cleanup. Um, then I look at, well, what, what happens next? So we develop some properties along Route 105 that still probably leaves you quite short of the $6.9 million cleanup, which is in the center of the, basically in the center of the, the, the property for, for the most part. So, how do you get from where you are today to $6.9 million cleanup value 
And how do you get from here to there by just selling six lots on 79, so many lots on 105, and if you end up short of the 6.9 to clean it up, what happens then? Well, uh, I mean, let me just, let me, oh, okay. it's, it's sort of like the elephant in the room, because I've had conversations with the folks in bed, and, it, and there, are, there are many folks that, that think, well, we sell off the 79, we sell off the 105, and there's no money left, so there it goes home, uh, and leaves the town, theoretically, with that 6.9 cleanup that's never really been done. I'm not accusing you, I'm not, I'm not saying that's how you play, because I don't think it is. But how do you, how do you give us some sense of comfort that the 6.9 million will come from someone? So, uh, first of all, my conversations with the DEP is I'm going to propose and work with them on a plan of how we're going to, you know, basically take each bite out of the apple. Uh, so first thing would be the, the lots on 79 and try to take care of like a, the small doctor's office and uh, try to abate the, the old children's hospital off to the side there. So the money's gonna go from here right to there. The next thing would be is if we look at the tall building uh, and what has to be done in there, that one there is a $500,000 cleanup for that building itself. And so you take that, you, you budget how many units you could possibly get in there. So that one really is gonna pay for itself through that building, through selling the condos and things like that. You know what I'm saying? The nurse is quoted. And, and again, spec, I'm just being speculative <coughs> that that gets approved, the plan, the vote. It, it could be something else. Uh, it could, if the town decides they want an office building there, it could turn into an office building. If it's more feasible to take it down and uh, have someone, uh, a commercial entity or something, come in there, do something there, that could be another option. But the idea is to, I've analyzed the demo, this, there's two ways of doing demolition this. Uh, straight out dem demolition, and then there's selected demolition. So on that nurse's quarters, that would be more of a selected demolition, where you would abate all the asbestos. Uh, there's asbestos like in the tiles, the mastic glue that holds the tiles down. There'll be asbestos in the caulking for all the windows. Uh, and you look at all those individual components, which I have all the numbers for already. Thank thankfully, it was already done twice before. Uh, so I have pretty good numbers on that. So now I can budget that into what that project is going to take to rehab, for example. And then do the same, uh, kind of the same I'm going with the house up front. Uh, we have a certain amount of repair, uh, abatement that we have to do on the house up front for some of the heat pipes and things. So we're going to do that as we're going, going through that process. Then you get to the big building, which is the, the biggest elephant in the room. Uh, and, and it's kind of the same thing. What I'd like to see there, uh, if I had, would be something medically related, whether it's doctor's office, maybe commercial on the first floor or something, uh, you know, and try to utilize a lot of the existing park. I don't really want to go in and destroy the site. I kind of like it as a campus. I like the way the park is set up. I like the way the roads are set up. Uh, and I think adding commercial entities inside the, the property and not on 105. I mean, I look at the grass in front of the hospital, and I really don't want to see anything there. You know, I kind of I like that view. Uh, so. And that, that's how I'm going to kind of piece it in, and I'm kind of thinking about what these costs are, and then how it's going to work in the budget for each building. Just a time, money kind of conversation for a second. Yeah. Um, time is money. Do you have a timeline on any of these steps going forward? If I was <clears throat> to throw some out there, I guess probably within a year or two, I'd like to uh, start breaking ground on the taller building. The residential component of it, uh, and again, I can't speak for the planning board or the town or what they want, but that's just what I would try to pitch. They might come, tonight we might hear a different idea that might work better for that. Uh, but I would probably uh, the larger building itself uh, probably use that more for storage until something came along, whether it be medical, you know, maybe a Marriott hotel might come along and say, "Hey, this is a good spot for us here," you know, because they're getting in the process of rehabbing old buildings now. Uh, that's kind of their thing. Uh, so something like that, and if we can find someone that has a better plan for that, the cleanup is really the minor part when you get into the restoration of it. Uh, there's a lot more money just to be spent inside uh, after you abate it. So it's just going to be piecemeal. That'll probably, you know, you're probably looking at four or five years down the road. I'm not going to drag this out forever. I'm not going to live that long. You know? <laughs> but my goal is to stay in it to the end. Uh, that is our plan. Thank you.
Rich? Yeah, Rich LaCamera. You mentioned the $6.9 million cleanup. What does that entail? That entails, uh, for example, the big building in the back. And these are numbers that were provided to me through Shop and Shop uh, by their licensed site professional. Uh, and in the larger building, the 6.9 entails taking everything down, right. demolishing everything, hauling everything away right. uh, to Ohio, wherever they want to send it. Uh, then you have the other options of selective demo. So if there's a building, like for example, the back, the nurses quarters, and it's structurally sound, and it fits the plan of residential housing, which is what I'm thinking of, then that goes from being, let's say, a million and a half cleanup to $500,000 cleanup. So it plus, changes. Plus the renovation. Then you add the renovation, <coughs> so you're correct. Right. Yeah. So you're saying that the building, excuse me, Jim, no, yeah. if the building is structurally sound, has that been identified yet? No, that is part of the process. So if for some reason we get there and, and a structural engineer says, you know, the footings are just gone, uh, then we go down the other avenue where we look at a tenant that might want to come in, purchase the prop, that one particular property, and take that builder down and start from scratch. So that's kind of how we have to look at all of it, because I can't speak for a structural engineer. You know, personally, I like the looks of those buildings. I, I don't think you're going to build a building like that, nurses' quarters, ever again for the, for the cost that they put in. I mean, no one builds like they built back then. It would be a wooden structure today if someone did it. So. And what about the main building? And the main building's the same process. Uh, that one is 250,000 square foot building. Uh, that is a one point, uh, it's 6.9 total, so I'm not exactly, it's, it's about a two and a half million dollar tear down to tear that one down and to abate the whole property. Uh, or it turns into a, like a 1.4 1.5 cleanup inside. Uh, and it can be done both, you can do both, you can decide that the boiler room might be have too much contaminant in there, and it might be a section you want to get rid of. So you would you abate that, you'd get rid of that section of the building. So I'm, I'm going to try to find a tenant that it fits, and then say to them, how do you want to do this? And you know whether it be a medical center, commercial, retail, or whatever. So it's very subjective how we're going to go about it. But I am aware of the cost. Like I said, I've been in this business uh, for years. I understand what it takes to abate a building and what it takes for the demolition and, and to remove all this stuff. Um, the, uh, you just had the uh, six lots approved on 79 by the planning board. And one of those lots in, entails the, uh, the landfill that's on the site. Uh, what are you going to do about it? Or what does DEP say you have to do about it? That, that's actually not one of the six lots. That's actually a parcel outside. Yeah, okay, but it's a right. lot. Right. It's a lot that has it's, been approved as a Form A lot. No, it It's not a buildable lot. No, it's not a, okay, yes. Yeah, not a buildable lot. Just so. So nobody thinks that I'm going to put a house on it. No, and that's something where I, I have to sit down with DEP. They've already, Stop and Shop's been through the whole process with DEP. They have criteria of what they want to do. There's a process to actually get in there, clean it, screen it, get rid of, you, you'll put the brick debris in one dump, so you'll get rid of the metal in another one, get rid of the uh, construction material in another one. And then the whole time, the LSP's controlling the job. The LSP is deciding how deep you want to go, uh, which direction you want to go. Uh, right now, there are monitoring wells that have been there for, for probably since 2005, uh, six. Uh, so whatever we do there will be based on Army Corps, DEP, the town, conservation, uh, anyone that needs to be involved in it. And we just go through it and try to try to do the best we can to clean it up. And get, we want what our idea, ideal situation, and get a clean bill of health on. Uh, does that mean clean it up, or does that mean? Whatever DEP tells me. <coughs> If they tell me clean, if they tell me they want me to take it all down, put asphalt there, that's what we do. I, you don't argue with DEP, just do what they want. I just one more question. All three selectmen pointed out that the uh, the area itself is, uh, you know, going to be developed in other sections across the street and so forth and so on. And um, one of my major concerns is that I think we need to look at a, a plan of what's going to be done there for traffic purposes and so forth and so on because it's going to be a very busy area. I personally don't like the idea of going, I know the houses have already been approved, I'm, I'm okay with that, but doing other areas piecemeal without understanding what the master plan is for that property is going to create a traffic nightmare. Also with the T-Station moving over to Middleborough on the other side of 495 I don't, I don't have to tell you about Bridge Street. I mean, Bridge Street is a disaster right now. So, um, from, from my perspective, and I think from the town's perspective, we've got to have a master plan before this goes forward. 
<laughs> well, I, I want to add to that. I know I had a conversation with Rich about that that very um, topic, and uh, when this was originally going to be stop and shop and whatnot, that was one of the aspects of that plan was that there would be traffic lights at Bridge Street, and I think we, we was it Vaughn as well. So, I mean, I I personally think that if development along 105 is to happen, I would, I would like to see some sort of traffic mitigation for the sake of trying to improve the, the traffic flow there. I mean, it is, depending on when you drive, it's really bad now. So um, that's, that's one aspect that I, that I agree with in terms of pointing out there's a need for that. Um. I just want to say. Um, you know, to that end, also, <clears throat> I'm going to try to yell. Sorry. Um, also, to that end, um, I believe that when uh, Bob Pellucci, who brought that 40B um, to the planning board, when he explained it, I believe that one of the things that the planning board would have liked to have seen also was a traffic study for that very reason. And every time that we have had those conversations with South Coast Rail, we've been asking them for what the traffic study is going to look like on the corridor of 105. And they keep telling us that they're going to require it, but they haven't done it yet. I, I think some of it's going to be out of our control, unfortunately, because we don't really have any idea what Mass DOT is going to do with that station. They seem to be fairly uh, ambiguous with what their plans might be. But I think that, you know, certainly to your point, it's you know, it's something where we're looking at congestion. We already know that there's some problem areas that happen in that area. So, um, yeah, I think it's a good point. Yeah, and if, and if I may, obviously mm -hmm. Mass DOT would have to be involved, obviously, from the start on this, because they're, they're the ones that, it's, if we do anything, it's going to exit on the road that they take care of. So uh, if they say this is, you know, they need a traffic light, who am I? That's what they get. I mean, I, you can't argue with them. Right, right. Um, Dick, I'm going to let some new people speak if... I just, want, I just had a follow-up. Oh, okay, sure, go. Um, the last time we had uh, Keiko here talking about uh, how the state and economic development and brownfield money might come available, when you when you started talking about traffic mitigation, it seems to me, in light of what Mr. Powerly said with regard to the development in that corridor. I think one of the things that Derek, even speaking to the 6.9 demo money, it seems to me the way Keiko left it was there was no interest by Stop and Shop and National Development, and therefore we were at a standstill. It seems we've broken that bottleneck, so it may be appropriate for the selectmen to uh, approach Keiko and see what the economic development group uh, and or any state cleanup money. It, it, at the point that you're doing studies, you have to have what Rich had. You have to have the quote master plan in order to have it as a basis. So it seems to me, instead of the LLC pill went out all the money for the demo and the studies and the environmental cleanup, it may be appropriate for us to revisit uh, what state resources could be brought to bear to assist you with this project especially at the point where we're actually trying to do uh, traffic mitigation studies. We, we, we really need to know, because if you're going to meet that four to five year, and let's just say it's five year master plan, you're going to have to have some, I believe, uh, state and or town assistance um, from somewhere. I mean, it just, the cleanup, the demo, and then the development, uh, it just seems to me that there should be some resources to assist you in that. Yeah. And I did put a call in to Representative Keiko as well. So. And I mean, we, we wrote a letter to Governor Baker, too, regarding the issues, again, that we're having with Mass DOT um, related to this whole area and what that's going to look like. So certainly I think that's something to bring up if we ever get a response that, you know, which I have, we have, we have a letter today, right. today right. that okay. came in. I mean, Do they want a all, meeting? The state no. left us this. I mean, you know, this wasn't like those. The state left us this building. I mean, these buildings. Be nice if they helped us a little bit. Right. Um, <laughs> sir, <laughs> this is a great letter. I'm Frank Spirit, Crest Drive. A uh, couple of things, uh, Derek. I, I would love to see something nice in the hospital property. I'm scared to death. Uh, a little bit. I was told by. Uh, 
a family member of someone who was working billions and grounds at the hospital and was still going. I'm fairly familiar with that hospital. I was actually a, a patient in there for a shattered ankle back in the early 1980s. Uh, and yes, it's linoleum floors and, and uh, <laughs> everything. I was told that there was a dump back there. And it, yeah, uh, everything from desks to possible medical waste. Do you know anything about that? Have you heard anything about that, number one? Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes. Uh, yeah, actually, that was part of what Mr. Uh, Richard Kramer brought up earlier, what they call the landfill area. It's about 1.6 acres in size. At some places, it's 30 feet deep. Some it's 9, some it's 13. Uh, so there's a huge document on exactly what's in there. Uh, and basically, a lot of it is, like you said, wood debris. Uh, there's ties in there. There's, I've seen uh, on the page dishwashers or wash machines, things like that. So there is a lot of stuff in there. Uh, but what I'm hearing is the, the soils underneath are fine, but I still want to verify for myself. Okay. Uh, second, traffic mitigation. Very fancy word traffic engineers use to make it sound nice, okay? Uh, this has gone in quite thoroughly. Uh, ZBA hearings on the new season's gas station. Uh, and we're going to try some mitigation. Well, the, the first one is you make the, the, the lights longer, the light cycles. So it slows people up, okay? And then it'll move to more lights. Back down 105, and at some point you're going to make that a miserable commute with four or five lights to go three quarters of a mile. Sure. You need to be very careful. It there already is miserable. And <laughs> the third, the third thing I'd like to suggest to you, Chairman Burke, is that this is a fairly hot button item, the hospital property, and there's a lot of interest in it by an awful lot of people. And I would like to make a recommendation that the front panel, maybe this is you, Rita. I don't know. Uh, on your uh, town homepage, maybe we just do a hospital project with a link. Do we put the Vimeo link? Mm -hmm. So instead of making people hunt for that stuff, it's on under hospital. Oh, boom, there's the thing they talked about at the meeting. And I, I'm working toward a goal of making sure the people sitting here uh, get the same information, look at the same pictures. You all have nice documents, right, before every uh, meeting. We run off nice documents, everybody knows it, and you have a little map that says parcel 13A on this, and the rest of us are going, that's parcel 13B. So maybe we can make some effort in there. It's not a big deal to put links on that that homepage. Right, no, I think that's our intent, certainly. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Frank. Um, I'm Barbara Minkowski, I'm on the planning board. My only question um, is, are you using an architect now, and if so, who are they? And have they worked on anything this size? Uh, no, I'm not using that. I haven't got to that step yet. Okay. Uh, but uh, my first step is to work with the LSP mm -hmm. to, to, to in, you know, inspect the whole building, the area, and all that. And then the structural engineer to make sure that the building can even handle any remodeling. Mm -hmm. uh, and then go to the architect level at that. I'll try to come up with some renditions at some point. Uh, I, I kind of wish I would have had more today. But this, I'm still, it's still in its infancy stage for me. I mean, I'm just getting off the ground with this myself, but I will have all that so people can see that. Sir? Uh, <clears throat> Brian Dale, Big Pond Drive. Uh, relatively new resident of Lakeville, about a year now. I uh, grew up in Rainham. Uh, just want to say it's great to see a local person actually dove in and took on this nightmare. Uh, since we've moved in and drove down 105, it's been like, why the hell is this nothing's happened here? So it's great that somebody's going to try to do something. Uh, lots of great civil discussion here, good questions, everything, um, the same concerns. But you also asked at the beginning, do you want to hear ideas? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, I think it'd be great. I mean, I don't know how many more spaces we have this close to a highway. We heard earlier from the assessors, 86.5% of our tax base is residential, which means basically the town sits on our shoulders and it's only going to get more expensive over the years. I'd love to see mixed use, some commercial in there, restaurants, whatever, a, a satellite from one of the rehab hospitals in Boston, walk-in clinic. If you look at places like um, Market Street and Linfield, or maybe on a smaller scale, not is big, we've got Rush Pond Road right there and 79 residents, but places like Legacy Place and Dead uh, or much smaller scale, um, Patriot Place, things like that campus feel, you're outside and walking around, you've got a restaurant you can sit at while you're waiting for a doctor's appointment, or you've got a condo on the backside like Market Street has now. Like, yeah, I mean, I like that type of idea as long as it kind of still fits that Lakeville feel, why we moved here. <coughs> 
so yeah, I, mean, I hope other people give you some ideas because I want to see it be successful in something nice. And if I may, Mr. Chair, I'd like to figure out how we can get those ideas to me. If, you know, for example, if someone knows somebody that is in the medical research type and they know someone that's looking for something, you know, I need to we need to figure out an avenue how you guys can get the information to me <coughs> or in the ideas so that I'm hearing all this and I'm not. I'm always thinking social media, but that sometimes gets a little astray. I, I would actually ask if maybe the town could take the input, and I don't know how that would work, Aaron, but like one person in the town that could kind of bounce the stuff back to me, or? I was just gonna say, um, you know, when I sat on the Economic Development Committee, we put out a survey that happened, I think, how was that, 2013 at this point? So, um, you know, and that survey was, it solicited a lot of feedback, and a lot of it was funny. Um, you know, it's pretty similar to what you might get in social media. There was a lot of really good stuff, and then there were some comments that you had to kind of wade through to understand what was going on. But it really was talking about what type of development that people wanted in Lakeville. And uh, it's still available, actually, on the town's website if you go and take a look at the results from the Economic Development Survey. But that might be something that could be done. The problem with Something like that is that it turns into a very manual process because it's all just complete feedback coming through. Um, but that is a mechanism that might be able to, you know, be yeah, facilitated. I was, I, I was approaching. Uh, recently, someone wanted to do some sort of a business there, and I can't speak. It's just a small business, a mom and pop business. But it took them a while to try to figure out how to get to me, I guess, because I don't have a for sale sign out front. So maybe what I'll Get through, I'll get done, so I'll put something out front that identifies me, identifies the engineer, uh, the survey, and, and those folks, so that if anyone has a question, they can go directly to that source, uh, or directly to be my information be here as well. Because I really, if, if someone knows somebody that is looking for a condo, for example, you know, I'd like to start a list on who, who's interested in stuff like that, or maybe medical center type person, because in a long run, it helps, it helps me, but it helps all of us, I think, to, get somebody local, you know, get the information in there. Just like to ask, um, would you include your, uh, your email and or uh, URL? Yeah, my email's pretty simple. It's dmaxi at comcast.net, but it's M-A-K-S-Y. Everybody spells it wrong, but, and feel free to use it. Can I make a quick suggestion? Sure. Idea. So you oh, hold on, Barbara. Your... You were saying, my name is Kamiani, I'm sorry. That's okay. And I live in Lakeville. <laughs> um, so my idea is that he could have a link, so you know you're going to post a link on your website, the town website, uh, with the project. You could have a contact us, so we'll go straight to him. So every matter, I mean, people could comment there, or ideas, or I think that would be much easier than having to go back and forth. So. <coughs> Sure, thank you. Barbara? Um, my feedback from having worked in the development world would be um, try to keep that business out of the town because that's not really the town's mm -hmm. right. purview. Um, but maybe if you had a separate email. Yes. You know, it's easier for people at Lakeville Hospital. They don't need to know you. They can right. just know. Well, I want them to, I want everybody to know me. That's the whole, that's why I'm here today. Yeah. I mean, it is, uh, I wouldn't be here if this wasn't something I, uh, my hat wasn't set on. You know, so, uh, and that was previous slip, and everybody knew how to get hold of me anyway. But. Yeah. yeah. But I do agree on, on mixing private with public. There needs to be a separation there, so it doesn't look like your know, tax dollars are going towards this project. That can't happen. You can't yeah. let that. Yeah. So just be careful with that. Sure. Okay. Michael Giardini, High the Road. Um, my only thing is the. The one thing I wouldn't want to see there would be apartments. The reason being is just the schools, um, seeing class sizes go up and things like that would uh, be something the schools are already building a lot of money in the town. And they have a history of two and a half overrides and things like that for the schools. And to see more apartments without that tax revenue uh, would be a concern. Okay. And my wife is taking notes, so I am getting all this. <laughs> Uh, my name is Rich Schneider. I live on Deerfield Lane. Um, I just have a question for you, and that is, at what point in time do you know if you can separate the parcels um, from the original plot of land? Um, 
in where does the final approval come from to do such a project so that you can separate and obviously get uh, banks involved with mortgages and allowing them to, to buy these parcels without separating them from the whole contaminated project. Just, and what happens if you can't? Where do you go from then if you can only put some houses in and then you have the rest left? You know, that's just a question I have. If I, yeah. uh, I believe in, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think because it's under the mixed use development zone, I believe that the permitting authority is planning board for, because the zoning board does other, other things, but I think under this article it's planning board for the special permit and for also the. Yeah, uh, I remember. I know it's. But if there is one of the boards in town. Nate nodded. Nate, yes, okay. he's the planning so board. Nate knows. There's a planning board process here which your elected officials will then look at the plans and decide if they meet or don't meet the requirements. That's town. How about state approval? We want from the state. Well, I, I thought that, you know, I don't think that it's just town. Correct me if I'm wrong. Well, town bylaws have to have to be compliant with state law. Okay. But so. I mean, it has to pass both, right? Town and state? If the town, if it fits our bylaws, I think it's... Right. It well, Barbara's on the planning board. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Serious, sure, no, yeah. but no, I guess the point is, is that depending on what is proposed, mm -hmm. there's little oversight if it's a Form A, for example. There's mm -hmm. really no oversight. If it complies with zoning, yeah. it's an approval not required plan, and the plan can, mm -hmm. it, it can happen as is. If... Derek were to propose something that did not conform with zoning, for example, he'd have to propose a zoning change, and that's a big deal. You've got to go to town meeting, you've got to get two-thirds vote. That's very hard to do. So I think what he's explaining is his goal is to stay within the existing zoning, um, and if he were to propose something that required uh, approval from the planning board, they would be the authority that would oversee that process. Now, I guess my question really is, does the whole site have to be cleaned up in order for you to set up separate parcels and house lots, or will that be able to be separated and done as needed? I think currently, uh, I think in 2006 maybe, the, this whole parcel was cut into seven smaller parcels, mm -hmm. two of which went to the town for part of the 79. Relocation. Mm. Uh, so basically, it leaves the five parcels that are left. Uh, the big building's on one. The rear building's on another one. Uh, the 79 side is on was on a separate piece. Uh, it's, so it has been subdivided back in like it's sometime in 2006 to that area. Uh, but either way, uh, the whole point, you know any cleanup has to be done, and it you know and I'm committed to do the whatever has to be done. I am aware of all the cleanup that has to be done, yeah. <coughs> but I know it's also going to be surprises. Yeah. Right. But I think Rick's question is, if, if you get a clean bill of health on the Form A's on 79, you can just sell them without the 21E liability passing to the grantee. Yeah, I... That's a, yeah, that's okay, a, yeah. And yeah, it, it, it's... Right now, I can sell you this whole property mm -hmm. uh, without having to meet any... It would be up to the bank to decide what they need. Correct. But my commitment to stop and shop uh, was to personally say, I am going to clean these things up before anything gets sold. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if I don't clean it up, I end up, it ends up my property until I can clean it up. Way so, the grave. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so it's, until it's cleaned up, it's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, sir? Huh? Sorry. <laughs> I know it's you. <laughs> uh, no, the, uh, the, the truth lies somewhere in between. That the, uh, if you don't want to go to town meeting, which for a project like this, you probably, you're probably going to wind up in front of town meeting to make money. But to me, that doesn't mean. Uh, if you don't want to go to town meeting, uh, you're stuck with some overlay this and some base zoning. The base zoning doesn't make any money really. The overlay districts not, but they all have limitations in how small you're allowed to use them, how small a bite you can take. And the bites, for instance, in some of those uh, are 25 acres at a time. So you have to plan 25 acres at once. And then now you're into traffic right away, 
you know, the, the, the bat that kicks into there, it kicks into uh, all the, uh, <coughs> you know, all the common concepts. Like it's just a big enough piece if you want to be using the overlay district, which is the mixed use one. If you just want to use the form that you like, uh, use so far, just the residential or business. But depending on which street you're on, uh, well, then you know, that's a lot easier. But it's a lot. On the other hand, it's a lot harder because you're using up your best time. Right. Uh, but and then as soon as any, as soon as you get inside the property, uh, it all turns into uh, site plan review. And so there's plenty of looks. Mm -hmm. There's many more looks at this for all the folks that are here. You're gonna you're gonna see this again and again and again and again. Uh, this this. You know, the They'll get tired of seeing me. Is that what you said? <laughs> well, no, the, 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 planning, the planning is pretty difficult yeah. because uh, you know under the overlay, I mean, it's a big chunk that you're planning at once. Right. It's not right. just a lot that you know have one building. You're not planning one building at a time, except on your major thoroughfare. You know, on your major road, you when know, you're doing just the format. But uh, anything else is more complicated. And, you know, He's also a player. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I'll say something before you can. Yeah, do you, just, just one more. Oh, what? Out there? Yeah, no, just oh. before you. 30? Yeah, yeah. yeah. 225 Bedford Street. Okay. Um, I'm confused on Rhode Island Road. The lots, uh, uh, is he able to collect money on those lots right away uh, today? And go right around to 105, Mr. Chairman, and get the money for those right, lots right away. Um, I, I don't know. I, I would assume so if they're separate lots, okay. right? And that's what you indicated, right. or, or separate parcels, I should say. Okay. So there's five separate parcels. Uh, there's oh. six for me buildable house lots. No, no, I mean in terms of oh, like... five total separate parcels, yes. Right, so on that separate parcel that contains the Form A's, for example, right. if it's you can this. prove that that's clean, and I'm assuming that that's why you've dug those test right. holes, right? Exactly. right? Yeah. Then you, he could sell that portion of it. Yeah, the separate house lots. Correct. He put the money in his pocket. Well, yeah, I mean, he okay. bought the yeah. property. What, okay. That's why yeah. people well, buy property. I'm trying to understand, okay? Yep. And then he can come right around to 105 where the lots are, okay? And I believe he can sell them also and put the money in his pocket. <coughs> or whoever owns it can put the money in his pocket, okay? My right, if it's a Form A. Okay. You have no yep. concern. I have no concern. No, no, guys, guys, we're not going to start okay, down this yeah. road. So okay, all right, no. ask your question, right. and we'll right. we'll move on. I have another question. Yep. Hey. Okay. Um, so if, if my concern is, um, I just want to make something funny here, right? This hand is upset. This hand um, says, "Go for it," right? Just like you talked about two barrel carburetors and four barrel. Okay. Okay. Yep. So. My concern is if uh, the, whoever owns this property takes the money and puts it in his pocket and, and takes off, right, we're stuck with the uh, liability, okay? So I guess um, this hand says, do we, before he sells anything, do we ask for a performance bond? Tonight is I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. What do you think about this, the audience? What do you think about that? That's a great idea. But when a, when a contractor comes in to you and I, right, and says, this is my plan, this is what I'm going to do, right, what do you think about it, okay? But this um, um, company, whoever owns it, right, is saying, you know what he's saying tonight, right, and I, this, and no disrespect, but it seems very uh, um, wishy-washy, whatever you want to call it. So I'm just asking... Right. Two things so, that yeah, I, I think I understand your question. The question is, what can the town try to do to offset the risk of eventually assuming the liability for a cleanup? Right. That is, I'm just well, trying to if, paraphrase it. If 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 he sells sells those lots on 79, comes right down to 105, sells those lots, and then says, "See you later." Right. See you later, and then we're right. stuck with the liability. So I'm asking before he sells. The company sells any lots that we get in a bond. Okay, the bond. Right. Would cover well, to answer your question, when you do a form A, it's an approval not required. 
you, you really don't have any leverage. And, and okay. I, would, I would speak, and I don't want to speak for the planning board, but that's my understanding is that they can't require a bond of any sort for what's called an approval not required plan because if they don't act on it, it's approved through a, a time period, it's automatically approved. They simply get the law if it conforms to zoning. So there's no, no um, leverage on the part of, of a town committee to, to do too much um, when it's a Form A. Okay, so, so the company can come in and sell those lots and then let, leave us hanging. Okay, so he sells the lots, or the company sells the lots, right? We can't do anything about it, but can we say, okay, until you make up your mind, we know it's going to be a cleanup of six, uh, six million dollars, roughly, right? That we have a bond for that. So whatever happens there, we know that we have insurance policy that the place is going to be cleaned up. It's not going to be left behind on the taxpayer. Right. Um, I don't know. Does anybody have an answer to that question? That that the answer is yes, Rich. No, the answer is no. <laughs> okay. But I just want to clarify something. The Form A lots on, on 79 are residential lots. If, if Derek comes in and asks for commercial lots on 105, correct me if I'm wrong, Barbara, he has to go through site plan review with the planning board. So there is some control from the town having to do with commercial lots, not residential lots. If he sold everything on residential all the way around as Form A lots, the answer is no. But if he comes in and he says on 105, I want to divide that into 10 commercial lots, he's got to go in front of the planning board for a site plan review, which then the planning board has control over those lots. Yeah, but not what's behind. Not what's behind, not at that point, no. Right. So that's your answer. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, but what about the bond for the uh, uh, hospital, right? Before we take one step further. No, no, I think that was Rich's first answer was no, correct? Relative to right. a bond. Okay. There's, okay. There's, no, there's no mechanism by which we could require a private landowner to put a performance bond up for an anticipated cost when he could decide to never tear those buildings down and never incur that liability. Uh, were you saying, Richard, on the lots? Okay, there's two, there's two breakups. One is the residential lots, which is the one he just did on 79. I think it's five or six lots, which has already been approved by the planning board, right, Barbara? Now, so if he decides that, oh, geez, I can't sell these commercial lots, then he can go... The in residential ones. Excuse me, yeah. residential lots, and then he says, well, you know, I'm going to put all residential on 105. Commercial. Com well, either way. Yeah, commercial. all residential, all commercial, yeah. That's on the street side. On the street right, side. Yeah. Right. But if he decides, you know, geez, this isn't going too well, I'm just going to subdivide those into the residential lots, he can do that. Okay, all right, I, I understand that, but I'm... I, I, I don't know if I'm not getting the line, but the hospital itself, say it's 25 acres, right? The buildings and everything. Yep. Right. That we get a bond to make sure that is taken care of. Okay. No, because my point is, is that he doesn't mind. have to do anything to the hospital ever. Yeah, but it's, it's to protect the residents. Right. He no, no, but as a private landowner, you can own a parcel of land with a building on it, and it can be a structure that is not used. It's an abandoned use, and as long as you secure the parcel um, from a nuisance, attractive nuisance, or, or whatnot, but even that's really held to a civil standard. There's no... Um, there's nothing you can do to, to obligate someone to, to do, do a performance bond to perform something that they're not even proposing they do. Yeah, but this is, this is a, um, I guess in a kind of, in a sense, is it a hazardous waste uh, site? I don't know, you know, you really can't no. say that, right? But no. um, it's a, a different, different um, situation. It's, you know, uh, okay, so if somebody wanted to put a, um, dig out a cranberry bog, you would ask them for a bond, okay, for a bond to make sure they fulfilled what they would, said they were going to do. So that's all I'm saying. Right. Okay. He hasn't formally proposed anything. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, you know, that, that's, the, that's the distinction is, is if, he, if he formally proposed a plan to the planning board to say, I want to do X, Y, and Z, they would absolutely have a bonding element to, 
or a bond element to that that proposal. I, I would assume, correct? So I'm too new to answer that question. I don't know. Maybe Zink can answer that question. But before Zink, does that you want to just yeah, touch on that? Reason. You have to have a reason. Uh, of course, we can ask someone to bond something, but you have to have a good reason to do it. Uh, we have to anticipate that if they don't, you know, if they're trying to sell some of the lots on the inside of it, uh, then we have what we, we would bond the idea. We would bond the completion of the road to the lots. That is the most common thing to do. Or we would bond the completion of the electric service to the lots, um, things like that. Or we, or we would bond, I, I suppose, we, we could bond, uh, you know, cleaning up some part of it, but that would have to be negotiated with the owner after he, after he uh, decided what he was going to do, what he was going to build. Uh, you know, but but that, that that's a it's a negotiated process in every single case. Uh, all of those bonds, and it's uh, and it's, it's supervised by the, the the reason. Well, we don't really have the reason we say state is because most of the rules that we enforce and work by are state rules, not local rules. I mean, when it gets into this land stuff, it, it's all state stuff, and we're. We're obliged to not overcharge somebody. We can't charge somebody enough on a bond to make them not do the job because the bond costs so much. It has to be a realistic bond and everything. I mean, it, there's, there's, there's constraints on everybody, but they're negotiated. <clears throat> Thank you. Can I have one more question or, or let this guy go? Or? I, I don't know. I mean, is it relative yeah. to the... Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Because we, we really got to wrap this up. Okay, I have a proposal. Okay. You know, he wants some ideas, and everybody has some ideas. What I want to do is take the property over eminent domain, okay, and put the police station there, okay, and uh, a further growth of we're going to need a school and a possible fire station and maybe a DPW. Okay, so we take that um, property over. I think right now the police station is eight million dollars, and it's no cap on it, right? So if we take take the property and just take the um, the money, eight thousand eight million dollars, take six million out of that, take take it down what we have to take down, and um, put the police station right out in front. Further growth for a school. And, uh, and possible a fire station. We're going to have apartment buildings across the street. We're going to need protection over there and um, and fire. Okay, so that's my proposal. If anybody backs me up, I want to start a petition so we can get a special town meeting and get it over, get it going. So uh, I wish you luck with that. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you. I don't know if any any of you support me or anybody out here. That, um, well, just a little backstory on that. We, I know this board has discussed the idea of that, mm -hmm. and we've all, we've all, I think, unanimously, don't agree with that that idea. Mm -hmm. There's the cleanup issue um, would fall squarely on the taxpayers. Um, whether it's six million or ten million or nobody knows. It's an unknown. Um, I went and met with a hold, the company that owned the property, a couple of years ago for the sake of requesting from them what they would need to sell the property in terms of from the town. Proposed zoning changes, anything. I wanted to get some information from them for the sake of that. Now, prior to that meeting, we had a conversation about do we have any interest in buying this property? Even for a dollar, <laughs> we wouldn't want to buy it. Okay? So eminent domain, we're not in the acquire and redevelop land business as a town. It's hard enough to do anything. It's hard enough to build a police station, um, which we're doing, which the, the cost ideally is capped and hopefully doesn't exceed it that. Is capped? Yes. Eight, eight, what's the price? $8 million, is it? Um, it's more than that because some money has already been appropriated. I want to say it's like 8.7, or I, I don't remember the exact figures, but but it, it can't exceed that because a town meeting, uh, or I should say the, the debt exclusion was was a certain amount. I think it was eight million. Yeah, I mean it. 
technically could, but so we take six million out of that and, and take down the hospital and two no. million for the police station, a beautiful piece of property right out front no. here. No, no, not in the real estate business. You can, yeah, I mean, by all by all means, if if you want to try to get a petition together, I, I applaud that. I mean, go for it, man. I I wouldn't support it personally, but I'm, I would never I would never dissuade you from from trying to realize that vision. I wouldn't, because that's what town government's all about. You know, you we can all participate in this. You know, we we have we, we need money, okay? We need money to run the town we, for the schools, the police department, and the fire department. We talk about overrides, right? And then you talk about um, cutting town government. What's that mean? You're going to cut the police department down to one person, the fire department down to one person, the highway department? That's I don't think anybody's happen. ever said that in, a, no, in you didn't one have of our meetings. That. You said that you were going to. Um, um, town cuts. We did have that once. No, I don't, okay. I don't think so. Sir, I appreciate your okay. insight, right. but we're going to move you. on from this. Thank Does you. anybody Thank who you. hasn't spoken have a question? Because I want to try to wrap this up because we do have more agenda items. Ma'am? Oh, sir, you'll go next. <laughs> yeah. I'm Karen. I'm from um, Apple's Road. Derek, now you said you made a deal with Stalin Charter. You bought the property. And you made deals with them. They had to clean that up before you sold it. Say what? Say, say that one more time. That you have to clean it up before you sell the property? Yeah, I, I made a commitment to them mm -hmm. that I would clean up anything before it's sold. Okay. So basically, it'll be a personal guarantee by me that I'll get here cleaned but, up. But what, what if you don't do that you can't do that? What happens with that, that deal? If I don't clean it up, mm -hmm. then I won't sell it. Because, and, and let me go a little further, because no, like this gentleman said, no one's going to buy it or get any finance for it anyway. Yeah, no, sir. Hang on. Yep. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks for raising your hand. Sir, do you have a question? Yes, uh, Nicholas. Um, as I'm going through this, I'm led to believe that pretty much all of the hazardous waste is just like in the asbestos and stuff that is inside the buildings. Well, there's asbestos, there's lead paint, uh, yeah, possibly might be some PCBs and transformers. Uh, it's it's a three-page report, so I don't want to say that's all there is. Uh, so it's pretty much all contained within the buildings. Yeah, out, outside there, there is a landfill area that we talked about earlier. Uh, that's the 1.6-some acres. Uh, and again, if there's anything else in the ground, we're, we're going to be doing test holes to look for all that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Derek, do you have anything else? I just want to thank everybody for coming. And again, uh, dmaxi at comcast.net. If you have any concerns, whatever, just toss me an email and I'll try to respond as quick as possible. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thank well, you guys. well done. Well done. Thanks, Derek. Madeline? Thank you. The, the, I know you took copious notes, yes. but the CD is available. I don't care if they talk. <laughs> Why does it matter if they talk as long as we can hear? Because they can't hear. Because cable can't That's hear. Okay. 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 All right. All right. Let's go. Folks, we're going to resume our meeting. So if you're going to talk, if you can do it out in the parking lot, and hopefully it's not raining. <laughs> and thanks again for coming. I appreciate it. All right, uh, agenda item number three is to discuss the 40R application for the Department of Housing and Community Development. So, Amy, Town Council Amy, I'm not even going to try to ask, is in the process of filing our, or filling out our 40R application. We have her list of questions along with a map showing the two proposed districts highlighted in yellow in our original 40R application from 2006. So she has some questions here, and I thought we could just go through these and discuss these and, and get answers to Rita on it. So when we talk about 40R, we're talking about only the development, or I should say only the parcels down by the commuter rail station, the existing commuter rail station, who knows how long it will be there. Um, we've had subsequent conversations about the hospital site, and we decided not to pursue 40R designation, really for the, the simple fact that um, it, I think it was Nelson's question 
on the density, on, on whether you made you hit your number with your 40B, could somebody still come in under 40R and do a more dense development? And the answer is yes. So because of that, we don't want to mess with the zoning on the hospital. We're not going to propose anything. So this is just specific to the 40R um, that abuts the current 40R um, down at the train station. So. But I want to, I don't know that we ever changed the vote. We were going to do a 40R for, we'll call it the end of Riverside, the parking lot and the hospital site. Because to, to answer that question, whether it be 40R or 40B, is you would start the project and let's say that Delson's question was is if you need if you met your requirement of 50 more 40 B's or 40 R's okay her her answer was you're approving a project so if they came to you for an 80 project 80 units and but you met your criteria at 50 you're approving the project ahead of time so you wouldn't even even under a 40 B say whoa stop at the 50 because you're approving an 80 project and I thought that she led us to believe that you can control your densities better <coughs> at a 40 well, ah. you can so, yes so, the so I don't know right there's a distinction and the distinction is you can create specific density for that 40 yard district yeah but then we said who's going to do that and how are we going to do that? Mm -hmm. And I don't even care because I'm not concerned with a hospital site relative to 40R. If you guys want to put together a subcommittee and propose something at town meeting, have at it. Mm -hmm. I want nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. It's just not my bag. I don't okay. care okay. about it. Okay, um, but I, I, I don't. Personally, but right, if you guys right. want to jump no, in. But, I right, but that. it wasn't. <laughs> I don't know. No, no, right, right. Like, but even, but even in a 40B okay. district. You you would not stop the project when you got to the 50 if he gave you an if 80 project, project right. housing to, development. Right. So but you're stuck with the surplus if it bumps it over on yes. that one particular yes. development. Yes. Right. And, and but, right. But I think right. that you know, and I, I agree with the rest of it, but we never went further with that discussion. Well, the other thing too, though, is the 40. I'm not saying we need to. Even right. if there is a 40 R overlay. Yeah. Someone can still propose a 40B exactly. with a density that's different from what the 40R restrictions you, are because the it's for, under right. the 40B regs, right. not right. the 40R. That's the right. The 40R, reason. you can have less dense if you so choose to. Right. And a 40B is the town would not want a high-rise building with parking underneath. So but, I, I just was taken... Right. Yeah, a little exception to the 40B versus 40R. You don't stop either project right. in the middle of it. But in the 40B, we would end up with something less desirable, unless well, we wanted to control but, the 40R. But as Aaron right. said, how do you do that? Right, right. but I think that the, the point to be made is that we're not at our 10% limit. So someone coming in with a 40B can do whatever they want. Yes. Yes. Right. But, but my point was that if we were at our 10% limit and we had a 40 R on the hospital right. site, they could still they do could the do R. denser development yep. than if there Correct. was no 40 R there, and that's right. why I am well, okay with there not being so 40 R. My on the hospital. question on this whole thing now is: so when we met with DHCD, what we said is there's three there's three projects. I guess we want to call them A, B, and C, and we had different color zoning for, you know, if we were going to do a 40R on option parcel A, which was the proposed 40B that we already have in front of us. So the reason why we said this might be a good idea is because we already know there's a 40B project out there that's coming. So if we can overlay the 40R anyways, yep. and we can do it under 40R, then at least we could get potential density payments. Again, not counting on the state for anything in right. any way, shape, or form, but the possibility exists that this, pro this project's going in anyways, if we can get some money from the state, which again, I understand as people have said, it's not guaranteed money. We know that we fight for all this money every single year. Yeah. Um, you know, But it's a possibility to get some money for something that's already coming here. So that was option or parcel A. Parcel B 
was looking at like the end of Riverside, where right now we've had these lots that have been sitting there because of existing zoning, nothing's really, or whatever the case may be, existing zoning might be only one factor, but they haven't been developed in you know eight years that have been sitting there. That uh, is it eight. That's eight? probably well. Cantrell's Longer owned it forever. So okay, so it's been there years. forever. Twenty five, thirty. I'll give years. it forever. Yeah, forever's um, good. <laughs> so that nothing's actually been developed there, whether it happens to be setbacks and things that have been looked at because it's not cost uh, effective for mm -hmm. anybody to develop. They need to buy two lots in order to develop one commercial property with parking and things like that. So it's been sitting there undeveloped. So the other, the secondary parcel B, we had talked about um, adding in some 40R language with regard to commercial, because that's not in here. So it could be an overlay that's different from what our existing overlay is, such that we could, you know, take those areas and change some of the setbacks or the, you know, the requirements, such that maybe it would be more attractive to commercial development. And then there was C, which was the hospital property that. I don't, you know, want to mm -hmm. do otherwise. Um, no. Anyways, so I think that that's good in the way of the background. But I think I just want to clarify that A or the three X's is that right here? Yes. So that's that's. that's parking that's, lot. But isn't it? Oh, that's the parking that's lot. That's the parking that's lot. The parking lot takes up three yes. lots. Yeah. It's gonna three be a great X's. solar field. I can't wait. Um, so where's <coughs> no, the? No, it isn't. I know it's awful. Where's the proposed development? It's this one, this one, and this one. And yeah. I didn't. Just those three? No, it's all oh, I didn't no. highlight. One, so this two, is all three, four, five. It's six, it's six lots down the end. So those that's six. all part of the project? It's actually yes. eight, John. I didn't yeah, highlight. Right, it's the eight. two in the inside. Yeah. Yeah. Right, is it right. Just, one of the other two that weren't part of that, what was parcel? Part, oh, so parcel B was just the MBTA station. Yeah. So yeah. I think that when we look at the 40R <coughs> application, because we're putting it in there because the 40B is going in anyways, um, I guess I wouldn't mind addressing the commercial side of it, but I don't know if that's a moot point. The only right since as, the forty B's going right, in as, as you point as you pointed out, except for this, except for the right, right. As solar you, field. As you pointed out, the right. only thing <laughs> the only thing we were attempting to do was to get a unit reimbursement of X dollars, and we didn't want to pass up that opportunity. It doesn't affect. Uh, the developer from developing what but, what he wanted, but if he put up an 80 unit, we'll call it senior housing, and not that that was that was a suggested, not what may end up being there, we could get reimbursed from the state. But, what we fight for is the 40 s money. Yeah, but did we determine that if we make this an R, that if a B, and now it's not a B, it's coming in under R, that that doesn't impact our affordable housing inventory and it leaves us open for more affordable housing in the town? I, I don't have that answer. Because I think we that did, is we didn't, the case. I, I, we didn't ask that. What do you mean if it's not similar? I don't think we asked count. that. Right. It doesn't count for affordable housing inventory. Why? Because I don't think it has to under R. It's density. It's not affordability it, criteria. We, we counted it already under the I district. We, we did. We did. We, we did. Yeah. Kens yeah. We did Kensington Court like, like that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So we did. That's we did Kensington Court like that. Says. Yes. Okay. Yes. So we already. Right. Our district. Uh, yes. Yes. So, so it does count. All right. All right. So now that we've clarified that. Yes. <laughs> these questions are all relative to this. The proposed new. 40R addition, whether it should be, what the density should be. And I think we need to know what the proposed density is before we can even have this conversation, honestly. If I may. Yep. Um, that was the uh, question that Amy had when I met with her the other day. Right. Uh, no, that's what I'm reading. Right. Yeah. And we could. I gave you a copy of our original application for the density, but I yep. think you do want to wait. Uh, she did contact yeah, Bob's attorney, know. but maybe you could answer uh, the other questions for her, and then when, once you hear from, back from Attorney Shaughnessy or Shaughnessy, decide on which density you want to go with. Right. Well, we need to know what the proposed density is before we can answer. The first question, which is relative to density, more dense, less dense. Right. Right. <laughs> right. And, 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 and I Bob Polito's project. Yeah. Yeah. 
But I, I believe, I believe that the only one that you would get reimbursed for on a unit basis would be that large apartment right, house. Exactly. So that's and the only thing. The others, whether they're duplexes or whatever, they're not going to meet anyone's density requirements. But that's just a, a, a point. Uh, so we, we can wait till Amy uh, gets some information from Bob's attorney. Great. If well, I you'd think like. the first question you could answer. Well, yep. I think you'd want the MBTA to be a separate, do two separate districts, not just expand it into yeah. one and well, then have mixed use on the MBTA station I, site. I mean, I think that, I don't know what we should be doing about that MBTA site maybe, now. Maybe I mean, since we met with DHCD, 72 different maybe things nothing. have come right. our way about that lot, three right. lots. Yeah. You know, right. I don't know yeah. what. I don't want to make a decision on something right. like that without right. knowing, right. not that we know anything. So I, I don't mind dealing with just Riverside and Commercial Drive. Yeah. I, I don't mind that. So let's just deal with Unless we can create a new develop. 40R that specifically bans solar farms. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. There you go. Um, totally all right, so, yeah, let's, I say we, we wait and, and we... We put this on a subsequent agenda when we get the information from on, on what the proposed density is. Yeah. The well, well, the builders here, Mr. Chair. Uh, where, where do you stand on your application for 40B, Bob? If you if you know. I was hoping it was going this week, and now they want to grade me, but I'm still hoping to have. You see, if, if he if he submits his before we do the R and we can't do the R before no town we're meeting, R. we're not going to do it. So right. I think we should be, it, it was kind of a yeah. last ditch effort on our part. So yeah. I don't know that we're going to do any of the R proposals. And, and it's not whether he puts it in a week or a month, we have to go to town meeting. It's a long process. So. Right. I don't know that we should do anything, Mr. Chair. We're, we're, we, we can get the densities off of Bob's attorney, well, but... When does it stop? When do we miss an opportunity to do when he the files. ODR? I didn't know you did, because I guess they, they were going to pass the law, but they never passed well, it yet. Right. They, yeah. they had mentioned that it was with the new regulations okay, that were then, coming then, out then the let's, housing, con so, let's continue, then. I mean, we might we could keep let's continue. just yep. along just to see what happens. Yep. Yeah, I remember there was a deadline, but I don't remember what triggered it. I didn't think it was I just the filing the I didn't think it was the application. The I thought it was... There approval. Was some, oh, the, the approval. Permit, right? Yeah, the issuance of the, the permit, permit is the triggering event to forestall our ability to pursue a 40R. Then, yeah. then I don't. So right. We might as well keep. Right. Yeah, right. We'll so I, keep I don't mind if, if we do the density the as he's proposed it yeah. and have right. Amy file the paperwork yep. ASAP. Well, and, and that I is guess what flip on that. did happen, right, with the, the Kensington Court project, right? It was submitted afterwards, after the 40B right. went in. Right. I don't know the timing of the comprehensive permit when it was issued versus when they did sh shift it over to a 40R. He withdrew with that 40B application. Right. Okay. Right. But they said they're going to change, the, as you said, they're going to change that process. But let's continue. Let's do the densities that he's proposed, and let's try to forge ahead. Do you want to okay. answer the other? What, what are the other? No, we'll just table it. Okay. Table? That's fine. Or do whatever you want to do with it. Um, all right. Number six, discuss clarification of vote of October 11th, 2017, <coughs> regarding letter of non-opposition for nature's remedy. David Miller of Nature's Remedy has requested that the board revise their letter of non-opposition that was issued to include the following language. To operate a registered marijuana dispensary, RMD, and also an adult use marijuana establishment contingent upon Nature's Remedy obtaining a state-issued license to both sell and cultivate adult use marijuana and marijuana related products. We have an attached letter from David. Nate Darling has requested that we send a letter to town council due to the zoning reference. 
as he could not confirm whether this was an allowed use under our current zoning. Uh, and Greg Corbo is going to check into that. Did we hear that from Greg? Yes, I gave you. Yep. Oh, do I have it? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh, I didn't even look at that. You didn't come to us with this attorney, right? Um, this guy. This was the, this was the, uh, he came to us. I gave it to you. Oh, you didn't put it in your agenda. But, no, I didn't get it. Right. No, it's right here. You okay. can read it. Okay. It the, pretty much says there's no such thing. <laughs> right. Because you're trying to, like, that's why, like, the attorney did Right, right. He's, oh. he's saying it's premature. Yeah, the laws don't right. go into effect until right. April 1st. Right. He, he, okay, he, all right. There's so, no right. issued licenses. So, the, on the one hand, the concern is, is that if you don't zone for it, it could arguably go anywhere. Right. And that's the concern. You don't zone for it, it could arguably go anywhere. Awesome. Right. Greg is saying, well, there's no regulation or there's no, there's no, there's no case law relative to the mechanism in which there's any enforcement. There's no ability to even do this. Um, I want to. So that's one piece of it. The other piece is, is that when when Nature's Remedy came in front of us, they at no time, in my recollection, asked for an adult use marijuana establishment. I mean, that's. What is that? Like a bar where people sit around? Right. right. Yeah. Right. No, I, I, that's a huge no, I, no, I think you're right. Compared to you're right. You're that, that, right. Is, that is an actual yeah. town-wide. Yeah. Right. That, well, you yeah. can have that. Yeah. You yeah. have to have a town-wide vote that yeah. approves right. for you to have on-premise consumption of marijuana. Right. right. I don't know anyone who's and ever going to do and that. That would be a long. <laughs> that would be a long shot with ever. me. Right. No, I wouldn't. Well, I wouldn't, do, I wouldn't do that one. It's one thing to to right. to have people purchase and consume marijuana in the privacy of their own home, or if they have a medical need for it. But this was never brought up during that meeting, and that's why I wanted to revisit this at this meeting because he's he kind of came in and said, "Oh no, no, you guys did it. Just change the letter." Yeah. Like tried to trick right. the town hall into giving right. him a revised right. letter that allowed this. Obviously. That right. allowed something that doesn't exist in the law well, right now. Well, still, but I mean, who knows what yeah. is. I yeah. just hope what that they yeah. switch yeah. over but, to like a but, for profit. Yeah. Well, they're, but, they're not coming through anyways. Yeah. They check their citing profile. But, so, like, but, he, but, yeah. he, but he, he, he added the word <laughs> adult use, which I believe ends up being the smoke shop, say. But the, the real question is <laughs> is the procedure for recreational, because we as a board, have supported the medical, obviously, but the recreational, we have also said that's where two thirds of the business is going to come from. Now, Greg Corbo takes the word procedure for recreational or adult use. There's no wording for recreational, but we have supported at our meetings the support for recreational sale. So, so if someone asks us for a rec for a non-opposition for two things, one a medical and one for recreational, not adult use, would we give that letter? It doesn't exist. So I yet. go ahead. I so agree. I think the thing is right now, because DPH is gonna fold into the D O R yep. yeah. uh, under which the program is gonna be not D O R. Uh, the uh, the it's like Fe federal right. Allowed right, now. That's mm -hmm. right, but it's yeah. but it's statewide. It's like so. Um, the it's is it DOA? It uh, doesn't matter. It's the treasurer's office. Yeah. Uh, so she's running the recreational program. Tip Goldberg. Yeah, DPH is running the medical program. <coughs> the plan is the Cannabis Control Commission's putting the two together. The regulations should be coming out, and they're they're working on them all right now. But there's no application allowed until April 1st, 2018. Um, that's when they'll start accepting applications only from experienced cultivators, which are medical, ones that are either through the process or already have been selling. So there's going to be supposedly 75 licenses issued then. What we have to be cognizant of is a lot of towns put a moratorium on it because they didn't know what it was mm -hmm. going to look like. I think the Cannabis Control Commission is certainly listening to what the cities and towns are saying with regard to you can't spring this on us before our town meeting because we won't have time to put on the warrant if all of a sudden that you can do recreational zone anywhere that a business is authorized to be, which is what it originally was. But what they're trying to do is tie it into the medical license. So there's no way that we could even ever issue someone a recreational license who's not a medical license holder right now. 
Um, it doesn't mean that it couldn't be a medical license holder in a different city or town. But we kind of have to watch this and just make sure that we're following it um, with the advice of town council to make sure that when we get to the Springtown meeting, we likely will have some language related to either the, you know, one of the points that was brought up is the, the fact that we have um, the not-for-profit component is in our definition and zoning as a registered marijuana dispensary, which most cities and towns have. Now you don't have to be a nonprofit effective January 1st. So those are the things that we need to be looking at from a zoning perspective is that, you know, it's coming here anyways. Um, you know, or if it's going to be not coming here, it's going next door. So, uh, you know, we just need to be on top of what the rules are, are doing so we can have something ready right. for the Springtown meeting. But what I don't want to do is the people that have come before us, we've said we would support both recreational sales and medical. And granted, they haven't finalized the, the law and the wording of the recreation. But having said that, we've encouraged people to do recreational that have come before us. So now, uh, where are we on supporting recreational? I want to make sure we're not flip-flopping on, well, on this. No, no, no. no. My, they my, get sucked into one. My concern, yes, oh, I think right. it's going to be that, in the same area. Oh, I right. think so. What we've said multiple times is we don't want to have you know, a recreational one over here and one over there and one over there and one right. over there. We decided you know, two was reasonable in terms of you know a medical establishment coming in, it would be medical first. I think likely we're only going to get one anyways. Right. Um, but that one would be the one that would also then offer the recreational component. So my concern yeah. is in, yeah. is in um, my concern with this particular applicant. There's two aspects to it. The first is I don't like the way that he tried to subvert the board for the sake of getting a revised letter. I think mm -hmm. that that was sneaky and that's, that's just not cool. Um, the second issue is, is there a distinction between a, an adult use marijuana establishment and a recreational marijuana sales facility? Yes. Like, is there, is yeah, that, that, is that a definition of some kind? that we're I, not aware of. I, yeah, I think it's heading... Right, no, and I, I agree yeah, with No, it will become a smoke shop. Right. No, it, right. Well, no so, but is it yeah. more than a smoke shop? I mean, a smoke shop is what? Where they, they sell uh, paraphernalia and the drug, oh, but you no. can't smoke it? No, no, no. Or is it, no. there's couches and people yeah. are... Yeah. Right? It's like a yeah. bar, yeah. Yeah. right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. exactly. 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 But we don't know that no, definition. But, no, that but, yeah. exists. We that, know where it's going. That exists right. under yeah. the law as it was written, yeah. citizen's petition. Mm -hmm. Right. But the right. only way to do it was through a town-wide referendum vote of you saying, yes, I want to have, like, a cafe for marijuana. Right. right. But, no. but, see, th there's a distinction in the language that they've chosen. They're it, not choosing the typical language we see. Yep. Right. So even if we don't have the ability to grant this, I don't want to grant, I don't want to issue this letter. I don't want to issue this letter from the, the way that they went about trying to get it revised, it, it somewhat punitively, but I don't want to issue it because I don't agree with the wording. Well, I, that's why I asked, like, he didn't come with his attorney. This didn't come from the attorney. No. Yeah, I mean, There's so many people that I, you know, you interact with in this right. space that are so not, right. it, like, they think that's fine and they're going to go and take their plants that they have in their basement and like put them in a right. you know coffee shop and start selling it right. so I, I i think i think we all agree that we would not approve at this point in time or maybe in the future the adult use but my only question is is would we give a letter of supporting recreational a non a non opposition for recreational for the cultivation and sale of recreational? Well, yes, we, I would. No, yeah. no, but that okay. doesn't exist yet. No, I know that. Because no, what's no, happening is that I know. under the existing laws, we have to I issue know. this letter of non-opposition. I know. Whether or not that's going to exist with right. the recreational under the Cannabis Control Commission, right. we nobody know. knows. Right. 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 Because we certainly have indicated to the people that have come before us that we, we support the recreational Right, because one sale. goes with the other as they merge together, but nobody knows how that's right. going to happen. Because no, we don't want a medical and a recreational if we're going to have one 
we want to work with the, the best business people we could find, yeah. which I think well, we have of the ones here. Right, but these guys, us. right, these, these, these people uh, were significant operators who seem to be forging ahead. They probably lost their funding. Yeah. Um, Frank, do you have a question? Frank's here at uh, Chris Drive, falling out of his chair here. Um, uh, I've got relatives in Colorado. Um, and let me tell you, this is a freight train that's coming down the tracks in Massachusetts that no one is going to be able to stop. The, the revenue dollars are just way too big. Um, quick question. Do we as a town have the right to tax the sale of Yes, so so how it works is we we can enter into a host agreement with a facility. We can get 3% of gross sales for medical, 3% of gross sales for recreational, and a 3% tax on the recreational. So there's a 6% recreational component and a 3% for the medical. On the gross sales. On the gross right. sales. There's also... A negotiation for under certain, or we've talked with people about the idea of getting for the cultivation piece because some folks might start a cultivation project or a process um, in a building and sell it in other towns, so you lose out on the revenue for that. That you would get with with a relationship like that, you might get a flat fee of say a hundred grand a year out of that operation for the for the ability to cultivate. But all these things, too, we have to keep watching because what they've just come out with also is to say that you have to actually prove that the money you're receiving in this host agreement is going to mitigate the impact on your community of having this in your community. So there's some reporting that needs to be done by the town that you know, we can inflate figures, I'm sure. No, we can't. We're, we, come know. on, what are you videotaping right now, <laughs> says the account. <laughs> No, but it's, it's all of this stuff is just so up in the air that it, we don't know where it's going. But the intent seems to be moving towards this being mitigation money, not being, which to me doesn't necessarily make any sense because it is, it's a business that you're operating within your town. So that's another piece that's kind of being debated right now is, you know, does this money have to come in and be an offset to expenses that you're incurring by having it here? Okay, so there's some offsets. And, and, and the other thing that... Uh, personal opinion here uh, is the, the way the mer medical side of it is dispensed. I mean, here's CVS sitting here. Guess what's going to happen here? Uh, you know, it's not going to go be just local people. Uh, right, CVS but do you, do you, do you well, somebody you, will. I don't know if you're familiar with the security requirements, too, that they require for the medical establishments for marijuana right now, too. Um, it's done by medical card, you know, only for certain conditions. And then there are very strict requirements that the state has put out there for whether you can even get in. You need to have your card before you're let into the ante room, before you're let into the next room, before. So there's a lot of control over the medical side. Clearly, once they go recreational, nobody knows what that's going to look like, unfortunately. Um, but the state, what, what's been said is about Massachusetts is the fact that because they have very strict liquor laws, that likely this will mirror some of those liquor law type strict uh, restrictions on people and usage and where things can go. So again, we're we're just kind of watching it all. Oh, Dick. Not to regress too far, but Nate asked a zoning question, and I didn't really get closure on what the issue there was and how you were going to handle the answer? There's two pieces to the zoning issue. The, the first is there's language that specifies it being a not-for-profit entity. Well, we'll have to deal with that because they've changed that on the state level to let these companies be for-profit. So we'll have to do a housekeeping change to our zone, existing zoning bylaw to address that. The second piece is that our bylaw does not address the recreational side of, of uh, the sale or cultivation. So the question is, um, or I should say the solution to that is to also put forward a zoning bylaw that then designates a specific area, the same that where we have the current medical. Um, the fear is, is that like adult use, enter or I should say adult entertainment, if you don't zone for it, it can go anywhere. So. That's 
those are the two zoning issues we have to straighten out. But, but to clarify, it sounds like, depending on how the law comes out, there will be a warrant to address proper zoning for what's been proposed with regard to your letter of non-opposition. In other words, non-opposition assumes that their proposal conforms with the state law, and you would then have to go back to town meeting to get the zoning to match that. And if it didn't get approved, I presume the facility would not be licensed to go in there. Is that correct? Maybe. We don't know. Because yeah. again, there's no case law to determine how this would so shake it out. It, it pro it, yeah, it probably yeah. wouldn't go that way. The state will probably say if you have a medical, it can also be a recreational, a separate door because they want, they want their three percent on one and six percent on another. But uh, right, we're, we're not sure. But I don't think we don't want to have multiple. A, a medical here and down the street a recreational we don't mind if they're combined if the zoning doesn't conform to it I'm not so sure the state won't write a law that kind of overrides it you may not have to go for it they might write the law that allows it that's all I don't understand the difference between recreational and adult groups well that was my question yeah, yeah. I, I didn't no. I didn't know it's, why this person, this applicant, chose to use adult use marijuana or establishment. It, it's the same thing. Like, the, it's the establishment piece, I think, that you I, have the problem. I'm not going to make that assumption. Yeah, I'm not, right. I'm we not, don't know. I'm not willing to, no, to provide I, I this I actually letter. think that recreational is not the proper language. I think the proper language is adult use, but it's the establishment right. piece <clears throat> that makes yeah. it who the heck knows right. yeah. what it is. It, it, this so. is... This is the process by which this was done, and, and you you dealt with the person, correct? I mean, yes. am I am I mischaracterizing the interaction when when I say that it was somewhat underhanded, like a bit like a bully? All right, he was <laughs> like trying to worse. bully me to write rewrite the letter. He wasn't really laid without back. the selectmen officially voting yeah. the wording in the letter. Be laid right. back, right? Yeah, right. Um, I, I don't. I, Didn't I, work. I mean, I don't. I don't want to support this. I don't want. I want to get an answer as to what adult use marijuana establishment right. means. Um, I, I would even go so far as to to rescind the existing letter of non-opposition. I just wouldn't answer. Right. Or maybe we just don't answer. Right. Them. I don't think right. he's going to Chair, anyway. If we, the letter that I did write them, um, I wasn't at the meeting when you you voted on this. Yep. So I sent them a letter that said that it's a registered marijuana dispensary cultivation facility. If we are going to stick with the letter, I it, I would suggest that we insert the word medical in this to make it clear to them. It, it's in our definition of what an RMD is. Right. I believe. Um, if I'm not mistaken. So it we is. only are authorized to issue one for an RMD, okay. which is in our zoning bylaws under definition. So. Right. Which is a nonprofit medical. The medical currently exists in industrial. Um, is it just industrial? Yes. So that would be the industrial park. Um, and a portion of land off of 44, up like across from Mucky's liquor store. Yeah. I think that's pretty much it, right? Or Industrial B? Crooked Lane. Crooked Lane? Yeah. Crooked Lane is, yeah. Crooked Lane is yeah. Where the, the giant... Oh, lane. sure, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. No more um, squash for Norm, right? <laughs> 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 Sir? Um, <coughs> Is there a buffer zone that's required for these from like a school? Yeah, yeah. it's 500 feet. Yeah. It's 500. Would you guys consider making it a thousand or? Can't stay long. Okay. And, and, and there aren't. I, I measured even preschool private ones, and none of them are. There are. Whether it be. A thousand no. In Massachusetts. Well, right, but we, we don't have any in, in that area. We have some preschool 
private facilities and I don't know if that's defined as a school versus a public school that we know where they are. Public schools aren't anywhere near any of these industrial areas. Uh, my only, and I, and I measured the other ones. They're, they're three times further than the state law currently says and if you went from 500 to 1,000 feet it still doesn't make any difference. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, my only other question was um, you had said that the person was bully like, and you said that that was the best person that you guys. No, no, it's a different one. We've had like five or six people in front of us, so that was not one of that wasn't the one that is actually purchasing the property next letter week. Not opposition to the person that was that she said was bully like, right? Well, correct, and he wanted it to be revised, and that's why we're talking about it because we she can't revise a letter based on a conversation that never took place with us. I mean, we had a meeting and she wrote the letter based on our decision. He said, no, 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 I want it done a different way. So she said, should I add it to an agenda? I said, absolutely, we need to talk about this as a group. We can't. This is an indication of maybe what's to come, if that's how the press is behaving now. I don't necessarily want to make that assumption, but bear in mind, I am the one who said, I'm okay rescinding it. I'm okay with the punitive aspect to my decision, and I want further language relative to exactly what adult use marijuana establishment means. Um, but I really like Mitzi's suggestion of just doing nothing. Mm -hmm. No, that's and, fine. I mean, the thing too with this is that um, it has to go through site plan review also. So it's even if we issue a letter of non opposition and then they come through, it still has to go through the planning board and site plan review. So it doesn't necessarily mean that they're moving forward on it, but even reviewing what's been submitted to the DPH, to this company, they're not even near, like, we, we're not even remotely close on the signing profile. They have two other locations that they're kind of pursuing that they've gotten, like, a go-ahead on, too. So I don't even know if 310 is still available, you know, for... Um, don't know. For Red. Welch. Yeah. Don't know. So. Yep. They all go back and forth. They all have a bright idea of, of trying to get in a business that's a billion dollar business until they find out it has to be private money and not bank money. And that's where the problem starts. Can you just ask too, uh, on behalf of the Board of Health, when the, like cigarettes, right? You go to Sarah's and buy it, but you can't light one up in Sarah's, okay? The vape shops got a waiver from the state that you can sample in the bait shops <laughs> if we make them put all the filters and fans and all the other kind of stuff and, you know that's bad enough if they're gonna if the if the use part of that is so they could sample and sit around sampling all day in the place that would have a whole different meaning of just being able to sell it so. we we would certainly not support a i don't think a smoke shop within a facility but trust me they're going to go in their car and light up their joint. They're not going to wait till they get out of the bounds of Lakeville. But we, we don't want them in, in that facility having a dozen couches sitting around smoking jacks. I don't. Right. I but that's a great point because yeah. there's, there's even yeah. the, the oil pens. Yeah. So you can vape marijuana oil. Yeah. So. This is going to be ridiculous yeah, once this right starts that happening. Anything that emits any type of smoke is treated like a cigarette in town because people were going into the golf courses and stuff and lighting those up and saying this isn't tobacco, you can't stop it. So, you know, it's right. like the ability to have the right. Yeah. It said you can treat anything that you No, know, that's smoke. a great point. Yeah. And we're going to definitely have to yeah. have some joint meetings with you guys, no pun intended. <laughs> it's like there's a pun um, everywhere. For the sake of <laughs> discussing the adult use play. Yeah, for the sake of discussing how we want to try to have a comprehensive review or, or oversight on all of this activity, because it, this is there's been nothing like this. I mean, this yeah. is great. And, and again, we don't know what it's looking like because they meet every week, and it's, you know, <coughs> stuff is being discussed. There's the forum really where you can kind of submit questions but just we'll see where it goes. Next to a bakery, we're good. <laughs> yeah. Sir, did, uh, sorry Chris hang on. Did, did you have a question? Uh, it's, it was my understanding that there already is one uh, facility approved on Kenneth Wells Drive. We have a letter of non-opposition for one. Right, so we've issued right. a few letters of non-opposition to different companies that have all wanted to locate in one building or another on Kenneth Welch Drive. 
There's there's one in particular that is actually purchasing a building in there. Um, they seem to be well funded and uh, polished, competent professionals that are moving forward. Um, so yeah, there, there's one that that seems like it's rising above the rest to to be a clear indication that they'll actually and someday there, succeed some or open, I should say. Mechanism that uh, you know to rescind a license from them if uh, you know, like say, traffic is. Uh, well, what we need to do is is um, enter into a host agreement with them. So that's basically like a, a contract. It says, you know, we're going to receive a certain amount of money. But it, you can discuss all of that stuff as part of that negotiation. We haven't gotten to that stage yet, but that's that's the next step we need to take. Okay. Now, are the abutters going to be uh, involved with that as well? What do you mean? The abutters to that property? Uh, in what regard? Uh, you said something about they have to go through a site plan review and such? Sure, yeah, well, that, that of course, but, abutters are always notified uh, from the planning board relative to a, a site plan review. Right. They'd have an opportunity to be a part of that, that process and, and voice concerns about any potential impact on the area. But the abutters are currently are all industrial businesses. Yes, I'm, yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm in that industrial Yeah, park. yeah. And believe me, there is traffic now and to have uh, a retail facility in there, it's going to be a hell of a lot worse. But they're also, isn't that the first building? The first, the, the, the there's two buildings, basically, you have to, the, there's no new buildings going up in there other than the, the, the Cape Cod Copper guys. So these people generally are either going to buy an existing building or they're going to sublease from someone that has a substantial building there. That's what they're going to do. Okay. And, and the, the notification of the abutters would be coming through the planning board and, and that type of thing. Yeah, is there a special permit component yeah. too? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a special permit through the planning board. Yeah. Oh, okay, so it's all everything's through the planning board. All inclusive. Yep. Okay. Um, I just have another question: Are any of those buildings that could potentially be purchased and used for this are those anywhere near that private preschool that you mentioned? There, there, three. I I drove it and measured the distance there probably four times further than the state law currently says. No, they're not. They're and not. what's the town's, um, I guess, idea on how much you're willing to let in as far as like, companies or buildings or such? Do you have a maximum that you're going to allow? Or? I mean, we had, yeah, we had talked generally about two. Um, that we are willing to kind of entertain. I think at this point it's likely going to be one um, because everybody comes with a great idea. You know, we just want, we want the best, honestly. You know, as we kind of screen through them because we're going to have someone that we need to partner with, um, you know, especially with this industry. We want to make sure that we know who we're dealing with, that we're getting the most revenue, we're getting the most mitigation, we're getting the most community support. Because um, you know this this guy who's buying the building next week, he you know they've pledged community support. They gave us a copy of a sample host agreement. You know it's included in there as well. So as we negotiate the host agreement, we're looking for that. I think the biggest thing for us is that this is coming, and the other towns around us haven't banned it. So it's going to be in Lakeville no matter what, um, whether it happens to be trickling in because it's on our borders or whether we're able to have some mitigation that comes from the revenue that we can get from one of the existing facilities. Um, we're more likely to want to have one good one that's coming in that we can handle. We have said, you know, two would be, I think, our max. Um, so we're going to be watching zoning and what's happening with zoning at the state level, what we can do to make sure that we can minimize that. We certainly don't want six of them in town. We don't want seven of them in town. We don't want them all over the place. Um, 
you know, are it's, these companies established in the way that you would be able to say, you know, that they are going to be a good partner? Because it's, it's all so new. It's all, it's all, it's, new. It's all about financial yeah. backing. It's yeah. about mm -hmm. who their attorneys are. It's about what you can glean from them. Um, you know, and, and there's some requirements in the host agreement that they have to fulfill their duties as well. So we, we don't know if it's going to turn into a <coughs> local licensing authority like with the liquor licenses that we have. There's been talk of that, um, but there's also talk of keeping it at the state level. So we just don't know what control we're going to be able to have over right. it. Right. And there's also talk, or, or there was, and maybe this has changed, if it's tied to the amount of liquor licenses you have. So yeah, that was part of the original. X number of liquor licenses, you have you to have issue to have X number 20%. of. 20%. Yeah. So. It's package store licenses. That's how it came through in the citizens' petition, which is what then got changed a little bit at the state level, but it's still undergoing some changes. That it was going to be that if you had issued 10 package store licenses, that you had to have two. <coughs> right. Or, the, or you couldn't deny two, I would say. Yeah, the, pe the people will be, we can't test their uh, honesty, if you will, but they have to have deep pockets. They've got to have three to six million dollars of, of cold hard cash or someone backing them because the banks don't do it. So it's a lot of money. It's not you or I going down, uh, putting a hundred plants in a place. It's millions of dollars of business. And that's why most of the people just disappear before they purchase buildings or anything because it's substantial. Chris? Uh, Chris Brad Holland Road, uh, to kind of answer or, or ask a question, kind of like what you like, right? Yeah. And um, what you were talking about, I believe was under the medical guidelines right now, to become a grower or establish those places, you have to have a state license to begin with. So, and to go back to whether, you know, we have maybe some unsavory characters moving into town, you can't, not just anyone can just move. Right. Yeah, well, that's that's a great point, and also another aspect to it is is like there's only there's only one bank that will do business with marijuana people, and to even get a bank account, what is it, five grand a year? Uh, no, the cost. <laughs> no, it's it's five thousand dollars a month to have a armored car come to your place to pick up your money because so, it's all cash. So you that's sixty grand else. a year just to have the bank account. But yeah. that bank does a, a, an exhaustive search, background search on on the individuals yeah, they're they're very, doing business with. So very selective. There's a lot of mechanisms in place at different levels to to kind of give you an understanding of who you're dealing with just by saying, well, are you dealing with. What is it, Century? It's Century Bank, yeah. You're dealing um, with Century Bank. If they say, yeah, we just had a meeting with them and they approved our application, that can, holds a lot more weight than the person who says, who's Century Bank? Right. You know, when we've but seen that. So. It also requires a minimum, um, you know, minimum investment in the bank of $500,000. You know, you have to prove that. And that's not nearly enough to do anything honestly, um, in this industry, but you have to prove that on the application that, that you submit initially to the state. State collects your license fees whether or not you get a license or not. So, you know, there's the trust fund that's been set up by the state to deal with the application fees, and they're pretty substantial. Yeah, from what I've heard, that most banks won't touch it because, because they have to get it's, sick. It's money laundering issues. So the federal government is not legal federally, so they don't want to touch it because they don't want the federal government that as being in business for the illegal operation. All right. So there's a lot of hurdles you gotta jump over. Is uh, is there a retail restriction in the industrial park? There was, but it expired. For every property owner? Um I believe so. Is that correct, Rita? I believe so. Yeah. 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 Expired. Could that be reinstated? How did that I don't know. I, I well, there was a time frame on it. It was a, a covenant, or a, a, most likely a land use covenant that was part of the original. Um, LDC Lakeville, Lakeville Development Corp. Regardless of when the building gone. Yes, yeah, it was just specific to the the industrial park for a fixed term of time. Um, I don't know as if you could. The town doesn't own that land anymore, so to come up with a, a, a way to enact a covenant, you'd really have to get, 
buy-in from from a majority of landowners within the area? I mean, that's a good question for a land use attorney. They think I'd know the answer, but I don't. But couldn't that be done with zoning? Because it is industrial, but it's not for retail. We put that that definition of the RMD, the registered manu uh, manu marijuana dispensary, in the industrial zone. So it's in there, I guess, under zone eight. Right. You could, so part of you could I, I suppose, if you change the zoning. <coughs> that, wouldn't that turn into a catch-22? Because then you wouldn't have any area to sell it to, so then they can put it anywhere? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's a very... I can't answer that question just sitting here without researching it some, but you're right. I mean, that's a great point. If you restrict one allowed use under state law through zoning, you've effectively shut off any place for it to locate, right? Because you're only allowing one aspect of the business to exist when the state allows cultivation and sale. You know what I mean? So. You, I mean, again, that would shake out through case law, but my guess is that what Bob's saying would probably hold true. A court would say, you've effectively disallowed this organization or this company to uh, utilize the law that allows them to have both aspects of their business, so you've essentially shut them down or forestalled their ability to see the, the, the fruits of that, that business. Um, and that zoning would probably be overly restrictive. So uh, the crooked lane. <laughs> yeah, except for right <laughs> the north side of Crooked Lane or whatever it is. Um, all right, listen, we've we've talked this one to death. I really appreciate the public input, though. This is exciting to actually have people, people. in the audience. <laughs> we normally just talk amongst each other. We, we had a skeleton for a while. <laughs> uh, we just crop <laughs> into different things well, because a great, no one shows up. Yeah, it was a great conversation. I appreciate everybody's input. Um, they don't have to leave yet either. But I'm just I'm gonna just suggest we take no action on this. And if you can tell them that we had a lengthy conversation and we're just unclear as to what that meant, the. the you know, and yep, what a they, terrible letter. Uh, what is it? Yeah. All right, agenda item number seven is to discuss the solar canopy project at the commuter rail station. The Board of Selectmen sent a letter to the Honorable Charles Baker. Charles Baker is our governor. We've actually, Charlie Baker was in Lakeville for a wedding within the last year. And he said, it was at St. Martha's and Mary. What a great spot, beautiful spot. It overlooks this wonderful lake. It was so picturesque, I really loved it. And yet, he's willing to have that conversation at a political fundraiser, not his. Um, but yet, he did not even respond to our letter. We had a very detailed letter as to our opposition, our concern with the solar canopy project, basically a power station. We're going to turn a parking lot into a power station in the middle of a residential district. And we're very concerned about the impact of that. And this is the letter we got back. Dear Lakefield Board of Selectmen, on behalf of Governor Charlie Baker, Thank you for your recent correspondence regarding your concerns on the MBTA's Middleborough Lakeville Commuter Rail Station proposal. I have forwarded your concerns onto the Department of Transportation. Now, the Department of Transportation, for those of you who don't know, are the people that came in and told us, "Oh no, no, we're not closing the Lakeville, the the Lakeville station. We're we're just going to use it for other purposes, for the Cape Cod Flyer and and whatnot and." We never abandoned it. And then two weeks later, when we were at the Middleborough meeting about the proposed station, the same exact people told us that they're closing it. it was awesome. And we're shocked when we said that's the first we've heard of that. So that's Indeed. the Department of Transportation folks that they've passed our concerns on to. Which we copied in the letter anyway. Right. Again, thank you for contacting Governor Baker's <laughs> office. And please feel free to contact our office in the future with any questions or concerns you might may have regarding other matters. <laughs> we don't want to hear about this one again. 
<laughs> Sincerely, <laughs> Constituent <laughs> Services Aid, Office of Governor Charlie Baker. No name. No name and no signature. We don't even know who this person is. Do you think that we can get City of Boston letterhead and <laughs> stick our letter on and send it to them and see what happens? So, needless to say, this is very... Um, I'm making light of it, but this is, this is offensive. It's such a bad response to a, a really well-drafted letter that, we, that Nate took a stab at, um, Tracy, me... Um, and Greg Corbo, our town council, we all contributed to this letter. It was a, it was a really well drafted, thoughtful letter of legitimate concerns that that we have relative to putting a power station in the middle of a residential area. And this is what we got back. So I think we need to strategize what our next step is. We have discussed with Nate the idea of a cease and desist. Um, if they do start construction, which obviously we want to follow through with, which you know we they, we assume they're just going to ignore it, so we have to we have to decide what our next. That's that's really not our best strategy. I don't know what our best strategy is. I'm, I'm kind of like. I mean, Pacheco wants us all to join hands and sue the. MBTA. I, I, will, I, I think right. that's a little well, that's, I, I, Right. I, 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 went on, <laughs> like, I went on record. Let's, right. just, let's call Karen Polito right. and then. Right. But I say we send this letter right. with a letter that yeah. says, We are offended by this letter. Yeah. Please respond. And we'll see if we yeah. get a different. Yeah. Right. Right. I, I think we want to send this to Keiko and right. we want to Keiko, Mike Rodericks. No, totally. right. Ke Ke Keiko and Mike Rodericks. But I would say. Send it to Jay Ash. Write it to write it to Karen Polito and, and tell her that we're insulted by a a uh, really? a uh, yeah. a form a form response with we know no action, so I think we need to change our attack to uh, Keiko into Mike Rodericks. Mike, not that Keiko wasn't, but Mike Rodericks <clears throat> was always of the opinion: if you guys don't want it, you're not going to get it, and and that was words he said exactly to me. So I think an immediate letter to Karen Polito and Carbon Copy and uh, obviously Keiko and Mike, but I want to FedEx these things to all parts. I don't want to put them in the mail. Don't want to do that. Uh, but we can email it. Well, no, well, email, no, you can't email it to Charlie Baker either. He, he doesn't have one. You got to send it. You got to get a form to get it, and it goes in this pot that gets stirred up, and you'll never get an answer either. So there is no, there is no Charlie Baker, one. So, so the the update was was a little bit different before the receipt of the letter. Uh, Jackie Crowley from Middleborough, uh, Middleborough Gas and Electric. She's the general manager. Called, and said certainly that. Navitas, the solar people, are uh, uh, fast tracking the installation of the solar panel. She talked to me a couple of days ago and said, John, they want to start digging because they have to create the facility by March 31st. They don't have to have it hooked up and running, but all of the construction, less the hookup, has to be done by March 31st. So she just forewarned me that they're bugging her to finish her study as to how to hook it up uh, electrically to, to the power grid. And uh, the other thing she had said to me uh, was that the amount of money that they had originally offered, which was less than $4,000. Now, so one's negotiating a price, and we don't want it, so I'm, I'm saying you know, what if you negotiate a half a million dollar price? Well, it doesn't happen, but even at that, we still don't want it there. But her idea is that for the size of the grid, other people are getting $20,000. So if, they, if they're going to do it, and I'm not proposing they do, if they're going to do it, she said we should get I believe it's fifteen thousand dollars a megawatt, and it's one and a half megawatts. I think I'd have to go back and get the math right, but she had given me a a number greater than twenty thousand dollars, not four thousand, and not a number.
based on the assessors. Do you know when she first was contacted about this project? Do we have a timeline at all? Because I know that the, one of the big issues that we had was the fact that we're nowhere on the original RFP, that Lakeville was never a thought of ever being a solar canopy farm they, until all of a sudden South Coast Rail decided that they were going to move the I, station. I don't think it was a long it was not a long time ago. I'm not answering that question, but it was not a long time ago. They had just given her an $18,000 check, which is the money that they pay of how to hook it up to the grid. So uh, Middlebow Gas and Electric hires a consultant, figures out how to hook up the solar panels to the grid. And they gave them that probably six weeks ago, my guess. And they have another couple of weeks, so it's an eight to twelve week project to figure that out. She was somewhat not somewhat taken back. She was extremely taken back that they're going to abandon the parking lot after all this work is done. She said this is just just crazy. But her message really was just the two phases. One, the amount of money that they offered is ridiculously low, and they're fast tracking it because they know they have to do it by March thirty first. So she was forewarning me on that. And after getting the, the ridiculous letter from the governor's office, I think your, your strategy would be to go to Polito, Carbon Copy and Keiko, and, and Mike, and say, you've got to tell us who we can meet with. Now. Now. Right. And it's we should, we, and I think we've agreed that we're going to do the cease and desist. You're going to get... Well, you won't even get this form letter from the Department of Transportation MBTA. You won't ever get any letter from them. So, uh, and then they'll write you a letter two weeks later, and it'll be different. Oh, I didn't know we were going to abandon it. But go there ahead. There is, but then there's the question of negative returns. You know, the the cost to you to, hold that in reserve to litigate they, versus right now you're asking them to talk to you, basically. Right. Right. Well, that that would be the cease and desist. If the cease and desist is ignored, we could go for an injunction. But what we've learned from town council is that that would probably be ineffective because of the way that the state has sovereignty over local zoning. Um, you know, we could borrow a, a page from the Alan Frawley book and strap ourselves to the <laughs> side of the train tracks or whatever he was planning on doing with it. They were going to move the... the I think we should just hire... I, I move to have Aaron do that himself. No, 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 I'm not doing it. I'm not that much of a zealot. I, I, uh, I second that motion. Okay, I do too. I, I move what, the motion. What's, what's unfortunate about Because she's the one that said it. I mean, it's absolutely asinine, the, this stuff that, that they come up with. And these people are paid to do this. Now, the consultants were, were or I should say the project managers were just completely, like, shucking and jiving the whole time. I mean, they would say whatever they thought we wanted to hear. They talked as if everything was an absolute. It was all a done deal. And... It was just based on ridership projections they don't even have yet. So how can you say there's a need when you don't even know how many people are even projected to ride it? And they, it, it, would be, it was, it's like they have the money, they can't spend it fast enough. Right, and with the solar piece, they accused us of, you know, aren't you part of the green communities? You don't want solar in your right. town? Right. Yeah, don't, uh, you, don't you want to protect the environment? Don't you right. care about you? the environment? It's because you're making $20 no. million dollars a year right. off yeah. the state right. contract We don't set energy policy. Company. We don't care about the environment. That's the state's job. That's the federal government's and, job. And the, the worst the, part the, being that we're paying the additional rates because you're buying the solar at right. a rate that's higher than what you actually are buying energy for. That's right the so biggest we're, con. we're all being forced to pay more for energy. The rate is higher. So right, the rate is higher. Company. So Middleborough and Lakeville has to subsidize this private, public cooperation partnership, partnership deal that's just making the guys that the only bidder, one bidder, making them what is it, twenty million dollars or forty million dollars or something I over think it's the even larger, yeah. Over the span of this contract. Yeah. It's not even being paid by the state, it's being paid by us. 
And that was the biggest concern, well, one of the biggest concerns in that letter. We said, look, this is unfair on so many different levels, but it's fundamentally unfair that you're, you force us to pay money to the state to have the tea in our town, and now you're forcing us to pay higher electricity rates to subsidize this backroom deal that nobody had anything to do with. It's, it's horrible. So anyway, I think we've beaten this to death, too. Right. But we have... Um, we do have a game plan, and we'll have to try to, you know, make some phone calls independently to Keiko and Mike. Yeah. All express our concern. Right, we wanted a meeting. Get stuff in writing to them. Um, Karen Polito, just try yeah, to try Michael, to shake the tree. Yeah. Go to the yeah. club. Letter to Karen Polito asking for a meeting with her. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, we right. offended to this. Get Keiko and we Mike involved. We feel like we're being right. less. Right. Heard. All right. Uh, do we have new business? No. Um, just one <laughs> quick thing. No. Um, if I could put this out there. Um, thinking ahead to the annual town meeting, I didn't know if I could propose a date this far in advance. My daughter's coming home for a week no, you in can't. June. No. <laughs> <laughs> and town meeting takes up my life. Um, near the end, and I'd just like to propose June 4th. Um, okay, we could do it in May, too, right? If that might be, a, yeah, we, I could try, <coughs> we did one year, uh, make it um. mid-May. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I just don't think that that's that unreasonable. I appreciate the school the, is available. Yep. I haven't checked with anybody else, but if you didn't know any of you would be away. No, get, get the night with the school. We can always change it, but yeah. lock up the school. That's the big deal. Mr. Chair, the school is already reserved. We're done. <laughs> I sent the done. form today. No plays, no right. plays that time. Um, <laughs> update on town office building design for the assessor's move. Okay, I know it's late. Um, I did type up an update of, I Aaron and I went over it today at the department head meeting. Just that um, my moving date, I'm hoping, uh, I checked with John Oliveri today, it looks like it's going to be de December 18th and 19th. Where's um, the plan you that created it anyway. Just got one back today. <coughs> Nate got it from him today. We're not going to take up any time on this. Just leave it on the agenda, and we'll talk about it on the 6th. Okay. But we've got to finalize this, and I want, as part of this, I want a budget for what this will cost. Is, is that part of what he's going to do? Who? No, you. Him. I don't know. Figure it out. <coughs> we, need, we need this stuff. This has to get done. This is, it's, okay. this is being, this is taking way too long. <clears throat> Um, update on Community Compact IT Grant. Okay, again, I, I know Missy wanted this on the agenda. So I just typed up a quick update, but I gave you an update on all of the um, Community Compact Grant, but on the, John Powell sent that notice to you, Missy, and I was just wondering, I'm not doing that on the HR grant, so that was a new form. Yeah. So I didn't know I put together something. This is where we're at right now as far as we've met with the people GIS on the permitting software. How come they haven't given us they haven't given us a cost back? No. We met on October thirty first. So I know Can you guys follow up with yeah. them? Yeah. Um, is that all that needs to be done with it's, this? They're gonna um, so the purchasing we just have to make That's up the our mind. system itself, right. right? Because then we also set aside what ten grand. Ten grand, right? So we have fifty for this. Mm -hmm. So is fifty going to be for the? Well, we don't know how much this is costing, and then we have the training, right? And part of it too, we're looking at the permitting for board of, other boards, and depending on how close we come up to fifty, we may have other uh, soft other departments that will be included. Okay. Such as 
dog licenses for the town clerk. Okay. So I didn't know, are you okay with that update for him? I, I'm, I talk to Sean a lot on the other uh, community compact grants. <laughs> so their cost proposal is going to come with an implementation schedule? Yes. And what the tra and what training, training is the cost? Yeah. Like that. We did have one from them um, two and a half years ago, and they're supposed to be updating the cost when we first looked at it. Okay. Yeah, if we can just follow up with them. I'm surprised they haven't sent, you know, a month later that they haven't yeah. sent a... Uh, well, we're talking to a different um, Zany or Zenny. It was a different guy this time. Yeah. I mean, they're like a regular company, right? Yeah. Why don't, why don't they want, like... They're, like, they're not state? No. I'm like, why don't they want to say it? That makes no sense to me. If I ask for a proposal or someone asks for a proposal from me, I give it to them, like, tonight. <laughs> Okay. On the HR grant, uh, that started out moving pretty slowly, too. They kept changing the people I was going to work with, but uh, Laurie Clarinder and I met with uh, Libby Corbo and Mary from the Collins Center maybe a month ago, and then just on Friday I received a 15-page questionnaire, so we're all working on um, the HR grant. The third one, there's no money involved. It's Mass IT is going to be working with us. That started a year, December of 2016. Uh, they contacted me right away after I applied for the grant. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> uh, I sent them our IT strategic plan right away, talked to a couple of people. I've been through several uh, of their employees, and the last phone call I had, they put me on hold until after the first of the year uh, because they were finishing up projects for other communities. So that one, like I said, doesn't have a deadline and there is no money involved. Did we hire the IT director? What's up with that? Well, that was going to be on the next. Okay. For the next. For another date. Okay. okay. So All right. Any me. other old business? Any other business? that may properly come before the meeting. We do not have, we're not posted for executive session, thank God. Yes. But we'll put you on for the next one. Yes. All right. Motion to adjourn? Second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thanks, everyone.